Father, I thank you for your life, for the strength that you've given us in this world. I've asked you many times to help us, guide us and strengthen us. We still are in need of that same thing repeatedly. We fail so many times because we really don't know what, who, and what we're supposed to be because we listen to the wrong people. And in listening to the wrong people, we often have a view of you that is not even close to what your word says. We make up gods of our own thoughts. And because of that, we live in such a way that it is so far away from what you want. And yet we ask you to come down and bless us in our rebellion. Father, we have a thing where we tell people, just preach Jesus. And that's not what you taught for us to do, not in the way that we try to do it. And I want to ask you by your might and your power to help and guide me to teach today who your son is, what it is that your son wants for us in the earth. Whether people like what I say, dismiss what I say, see it as heretical. Not only do you know my heart, and I mean you really know it, but you also know that I plan to give your word. So help me, I pray, to do what's right by you and your holy child, Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach, the righteous one. Amen, amen, and amen. Today, I'm a little heavy in the mind because I really, really and truly have a lot set up that I'm not, I know that I'm not going to be able to deal with. There are some injustices and things that I've seen that I want to report to you. I want to report some things that will help benefit our young people, our older people our people as a whole, as well as other people throughout the earth. I ended on Tuesday night showing people that had been incarcerated 28 years, 30 years, 15 years, 13 years. Imagine if you will just one year and you've been locked up for rape and you find out that the district attorney had the evidence to exonerate you, the prosecutor, and he wouldn't. Or that someone had been paid or bribed to lie on you so that their uh, win or conviction ratio could be higher instead of lower, or find out that things had happened to you because a judge was going to lose his job or her job because they haven't done enough penality to people that have done or that have did many misdemeanors. Yes, I wanted to show how that fits in the world of the true Christ. Imagine coming home or going somewhere and you just get shot, somebody get killed, somebody do something to your child, somebody do something in the medical profession and nothing can be done about it. Hit and run, kidnapping, trafficking all of these injustices that are in the world. And I have surmised that the leading cause for continuing injustice in the world is the mythical Jesus Christ, the teaching of the mythical Jesus the Christ. And so I wanna examine this topic today and hopefully it will give one or give, give us a good idea 
of how to identify him and what can be done about him. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so that we can get started because the sooner we start, the sooner we'll be able to finish. But the thing is, is that I wanna make sure that we get the information out in such a way that we can benefit because tomorrow will be what people call the Sunday. And maybe you get a message on how Jesus is real, uh, how to overcome sickness, how to feel better about your wealth, how to get wealth, how to get the wealth of the wicked. Um, let's see, what about, what's new about Jesus, how to walk in victory, and yet the mythical Jesus usually has something to do with that. And even when he doesn't, the mythical message of that Jesus often is the thing that is propound, propounded throughout the people. So let's go ahead and share this screen and get started. If you look in my middle panel, I have an outer panel on the left, have a middle panel, this little one on this side, that's a, what I call the third panel. And it's here quickly for quick reference, quick, if I want to look up something quickly, or if I need to click on something to open up a dictionary or an encyclopedia, that's there for my sake. And, I, and too, that can be for yours as well. So here we are looking in the middle panel and it says, the leading cause for continuing injustice in this world is the mythical Jesus Christ. And I want to examine this topic. Question. Have we been taught and preached to follow the true Yahshua, Jesus, who demands righteousness and justice, or another Jesus who is the spiritual equivalent to a rabbit's foot, a horseshoe, St. Christopher's necklace, or any other good luck charm that will protect us as we travel on earth to eternity? If I can, I want you, Andrina, because nobody can see you, I want you to give me that manila folder that's right there on that shelf while I go ahead and read this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, that manila folder just right there, it has my scapula in it because I want to show these kind of talismans and things that people have. Thank you, precious. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 11 and 3, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled, and that word beguiled is to deceive thoroughly. That's what that word means, okay? That word is he, as he beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And if you look down with me, we see Christ, you see that tone, or looks like tov, that means the Christ from the simplicity that's in the Christ. For he, for if he come and preacheth another Jesus, I'm talking about the other Jesus. There are many other Jesuses, but every one of them will be mythical if it's not according to what Yah has given through his word. For if he come and preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might bear well with him. I submit, I'm offering you to realize today, if you don't, there are other preachers that have preached other, another Jesus that is not what God sent. It is not what is given in the scripture. They have another spirit, and people say, you can't have but one Holy Spirit. Holy, ahagias means to be set apart. If you look in, the, in what we call the Oldest Testament, you would talk about Kodesh, it is still to be set apart. If you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, or another good news for whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, even if you're trying to accomplish the right thing with another gospel, it's mythical. You, we say, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. I'm going to show you 
something that I have in here. I just read in my little part in the middle, but I'm going to open this up so that you can see it. It says, have we been taught to preach to follow the true Yahshua Jesus who demands righteousness or justice or just another Jesus who is the spiritual equivalent to a rabbit's foot, horseshoe, or St. Christopher's necklace or any other good luck charm that will protect us. This is a scapula. This is what people use in the Catholic Church as a rosary. It's got a thing on that is called a Mary. You can use that to pray. And this scapula, if you're wearing this when you die, this will guarantee you, this should be able to guarantee you that you make it to heaven if it's been blessed by a priest. Is this the Jesus in some form of fashion that we worship and have been taught? This Jesus here, you put this on your shoulder. Now I can go and rape, rob, kill, pillage, but if I'm wearing this, I'm saved. The mythical Jesus is as long as a person has prayed what is called a sinner's prayer, which is nowhere in the Bible called a sinner's prayer, it is divorced from its context when preachers teach it. Yes, I said when preachers teach it, they tell a God damnable lie because they give a mythical plan of salvation that if you follow Romans 10, 9, and 10, and you don't know what it's talking about, you are saved like you got this scapular on you, or better yet, Tim, show them something else. Let's go to, I'm going to open up my screen. I'm going to share my screen. It should go ahead and give me what I'm looking for. Are you able to see on this screen a black woman? Talk to me, Andrina. You're not it, so I'm not sharing that screen. So I need to, I want to share that screen. Let me open up a new share because it, it's not showing what I need you to see. I need you to see what's on my screen. And obviously, for some reason, it wasn't coming up like I wanted to. Let me go and try again. All right, I got my thing open. Can you see it now? Okay, thank you. I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but it's electronics. This woman is in a thing that's come from Hamilton Jewelers, okay? This is a St. Christopher's medallion. They sell this. This is like a talisman. Now, the meaning of this St. Christopher medal is, I don't want you to hear it. Most people know that St. Christopher is the pat patron saint of travelers. However, there is quite a story to tell about the one of the most popular saints worldwide. Have you ever wondered why St. Christopher was so renowned? Have you ever wondered why people everywhere adorn and protect themselves with the St. Christopher's medal? In this article, we will explore the history and the meaning behind St. Christopher. I'm not going to read all of it. You can look it up on your own. You can see that they sell a lot of them. This St. Christopher's medal is supposed to be able to protect you when you're traveling and not only protect you when you're traveling, it's supposed to help one overcome obstacles. This is what I'm saying is the same and it's Catholic. So imagine if you were under the doctrine of discovery by the Roman Catholic Church, when they went and conquered the world, you could wear something like this and no matter what you did to the indigenous people or what you did to the slaves, you'd be okay. Or maybe they could put one on you and put you to death and you would be okay. This is a form of the mythical Jesus. Because all of this that I've just shown you comes from what is called that Christ. Now, I want to show you one more thing as we move in, because it's important that we see these things and know these things. So if you can you still see my screen? Because this is what is called St. Christopher. I don't know if you can see my screen or not. So I'll just read. I'll just, okay, I didn't know. I just want to redo the share.
This is supposed to be St. Christopher, a seven foot tall man picking up children. And now he's the one that guides you when you travel. There's the necklace. Where was he when people were being beaten, robbed, pillaged? Where was he when all of these things happened and the people wear these necklaces? Where was his strength? But yet this is like the mythical Jesus. And what I'm saying is the problem that's in this world is the mythical Jesus, the mythical one that is called the Christ. And so when I put up on my thing and I just said, you know, he's like a talisman, a rabbit's foot, et cetera. I wanted to show how people have used things like that before. But let's go and talk about the real Yahshua and compare him to the one that is fake, the one that is mythical, the one that I say all the problems in the world come from. Why would I say that? There's nothing about this rosary to tell me to treat you correctly. There's nothing about this scapula to tell me not to, not to lie to you, not to cheat on you, not to, to go and take your land, to take your country. There is nothing about this little, these little bees right here with a cross on it to tell me how to treat you, what to do for you. And yet, at the same time, it is something that is supposed to help you with Mary and the cross. It's supposed to take you and help you to understand that Jesus loves, Jesus saves, and Jesus will take you to heaven. There is nothing about that St. Christopher's necklace that's going to tell you and help you to get things right. And yet, they say Christianity is what America is founded on. And somebody say it wasn't Roman Catholicism. Please, let's not play. Those that know better know good and well that Rome had a lot to do with the Christianity that was brought to America, whether it's from the reformers or whether it was from King Henry VIII, when Henry VIII couldn't get a divorce from his wife, and when he couldn't get a divorce, and he divorced her anyway, and he was kicked out of the Catholic Church, and he started his own church, the Church of England, which that man Charles is over, and which that woman was over that just died, and which I guess if his son lived long enough, he'll be over at William. And from there, you get your Anglican church, your Moravian church, your Methodist, and your holiness. If you don't go back far enough, you don't begin to understand that the teachings of the Holy Scripture have been co-opted and something else was put in its place, another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit, another doctrine, and often we still teach these things because we haven't looked in to see where it is that something else has been added abominations of other cultures, abominations of the wicked. So what I want us to do is let's go back before there was ever a Roman Catholic Church, before there was ever a Protestant or a Protestant movement, before there was ever American Christianity and American legal system, which says that, it, which it says by people that are in the position of conservatism, that this was the teaching of the Christ. Yeah, it was the teaching of the mythical Christ. So look at what happens. People call this the Christmas story. You don't see Christmas in here nowhere. Nowhere. That is another mythical Jesus. But let's look at what happened during the course of Abiah when a man named Zacharias was inside of the temple burning incense, which is a type and a form of prayer. I want us to learn. I want us to see what this real Christ, the real Yeshua, the real Jesus is about. So after he had been born, I mean, after he had been born, it says his father, I mean, 1 in 67 Luke, his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost. He was filled with the Holy Spirit, the real Holy Spirit. And he prophesied saying, blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Notice he's talking to the covenant people the people that were not strangers to the covenants of the promise. He says, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Key word here is redeemed. We, we've taken a mythical Jesus and say redeemed means you go to heaven and you don't go to hell. And it doesn't matter anything else about how we live our life. He did all the redeeming. He did all the work. There's nothing for us to do. It's just to sit back, relax, and enjoy. As one time some young women had a song that said, lay back, kicking, just enjoying the ride. 
Let's see, this is what Zechariah says. He said, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation. A horn in biblical terminology is power. Then where'd you get that from? Because they would make it out of the ram's horn. Uh, they, I don't know if they made any out of the cows or a, a horn, but they made them out of the ram's horn. Uh, if you look up here, you'll see a ram's horn. If you can see that a ram's horn, at, out of that horn is the thing that they use for power. And they say he is raised up. Like when an animal raised up his horn, the jab or the push with it, he is raised up a horn of deliverance, a horn of salvation, the word soteria. Sometimes people in the, uh, the theology school, they call it soteriology, and it sounds real big. Because they start using words and jargon that the average person don't use, so now we can seem intelligent. No, he has raised up a horn of deliverance for us in the house of his servant David. This is important. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophet, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies. Is he going to save us with a rosary? Is he going to save us with this little cross thing? Is he going to save us with this emblem of this little woman right here that in the Vatican she's good and black, but here she has nothing that looked like she would be a black one? Is he come to save us with this thing called a scapula? Is he come to save us with St. Christopher with a rabbit's foot? Did he come to save us with the mm ha yeah, yeah, whatever it is we do when we preach? Did he come to do that? The Bible said that we should be, he, the holy prophet said that he would save us from our enemies and the hand of all that hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. Now, all of this has to go back to the prophets. If an individual excludes the prophets, there is no validation or authentication that a person could use to talk about the real Jesus, the real Yahshua. At the time when this was written, at the time when Messiah walked around, there would be nothing that he could use to authenticate and validate himself in the way that he and the Most High God felt was the best way to do it at all times. And it was to go back to his word it says to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant which the rest of the world hadn't been involved in and the oath that he swore to abraham he swore to abraham in the 21st chapter of genesis he swore to him that we that he would grant unto us that be de being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. I believe this one is the one, this one, I believe this quote, because he sware to him in the 22nd chapter he would possess the gates of our enemies. Is that 22nd chapter 21st, Tim? You know what it is, but you you need to look sometimes in the in the in the heat of the battle, battling against the wicked. Ah, that's the 22nd chapter. That's when he said, by myself I have sworn because you have done this thing and will tell not thine son, I will bless and I will bless you. And in verse 18, and in thy seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Okay. But this, and then in verse 20 and 17, he said, thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemy. This is not the one that I believe that Zechariah is talking about here. I believe the one Zechariah is talking about here is Genesis 15, where he said, your seed will be a stranger in a land. And then he said that he would redeem them. They would come out with great substance. So he's going back to the scripture. It wasn't going to be done by a scapula. It wasn't going to be done by just any good luck charm. He sent a man. He sent a man that heard his word, but the man that heard his word heard his word from him because Yahweh Elohim that told Moses, I am that I am in Exodus chapter three, verse 14, met him in the bush. It wasn't the bush that was talking. He was in the midst or in the middle of the bush. And Moses had to take his shoes off. And if you don't know the rest of it, go read Exodus chapter three and you will learn it. So he says, as he spake, by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be delivered from our enemies in the hand of all them that hate us, to perform the uh, the mercy promised to our father and to remember his covenant. And he says, the oath which he swear to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him 
without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And if you don't understand that, the one thing he kept doing is telling Pharaoh that Yah said, let my people go. For those that don't know when I say Yah, that's a short or a contraction of Yahweh or what we call God. Yah said, tell Mo, I mean, Moses, tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they might serve me. And Pharaoh didn't want to let them go. He said, we need to go up into the mountain and serve him. We're going to take all the people. Pharaoh said, no, you ain't taking all the people. And you can just take what I say. Then Moses tell him another time, we're going to take our cattle. We don't know what he wants us to do when we get there. And he says, no, you can't do that. And you can take so-and-so and so. And so what ends up happening is the more that Moses go back and forth with him, it comes to the time when Pharaoh says, you won't see my face anymore. And Moses said, just like you said. And y'all told Moses, I got one more thing I'm going to do to Pharaoh, your enemy, the one that's threatening you, the one that's got all kind of dominion over you. And he don't want you to be able to serve me. And I'm going to deliver you out of his hand. I'm going to deliver the people out of my hand. I'm not going to be able to just do it in the way that you would think. I'm going to do it by my power. I'm going to use a dead stick in your word. You say, Tim, is a dead stick the talisman? No. The Bible lets you know that the rod is that he's showing he's got a ruling capacity in that hand, that rod. And when he speaks, he speaks my word and stuff happens. And so what is happening is Zacharias is saying he's doing the same thing again. We've been in captivity again. We've been in captivity by the Assyrians, the Medes, the Persians, the Babylonians, the Greeks. Now we're in captivity by Romans. And if you read the book of Judges, they were in captivity so many times. And he's saying he's delivering us again. That is the, the mythical Jesus. Delivering us out of the hand of our enemies and those that hate us. Some might say yes. So let's take it further and let's see what the real Jesus is supposed to do. Remember, Zechariah says he has spoken by his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Therefore, I, if I go back and look at what his holy prophets have said about this one, it should help me to understand who the real one is and who the one that's not real is and just have gotten a label as being the real one. Listen to what Moses has said. Moses said, I'm in Deuteronomy 18, Chapter 15. Do I need to give you a chance you all a chance to look at? Or are you looking at it on the screen with me? Because I realize sometimes people are just listening. So in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15, this is Moses speaking. He had just got through telling them, don't be doing what the other nations do. You know, like how we celebrate certain things and we think it's okay and do Ouija boards and, and you know, do all kinds of signs and things. Well, Moses told them, and I'll tell you this, and I'll go to 15. It says, it says, for these nations, which you shall possess. Remember God told Abraham, I read it in the 17th verse of chapter 22. He says, you, you say they possess, they hearken to observers of times. That mean they listen to soothsayers. They listen to diviners and say, but as for thee, Yahweh, your Elohim, or the Lord your God has not suffered or allowed you to do so. Here is the contrary. It says, Yahweh, your Elohim, will raise up a prophet from the midst of thee. He's going to be one of you. He's not going to come from Rome and bring you to Feast of Bacchus. He's not going to come from Persia and bring you worship of the sun. He's not going to come from Iran, Persia, and give you Mithraism. He's not going to come from Egypt and give you the worship of the bunny, of the, the body of a man with a dog's head, or give you Osiris. He says, Yahweh will raise up to thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren. That really brought it down, didn't it? like unto me. Now, Moses said he's going to be like me. Well, who are you, Moses? First of all, you understand something. Yahweh's already told you he's not regular. When I talk to a prophet or somebody, I give them a vision. 
I give them dark sayings. I let Moses see my face. This is the pre-incarnate Christ. If I read in Hebrews chapter 11, it'll tell you that Moses saw him, but I'm not going to read that today. He said, like unto me, him shall you hearken. Like unto me, Moses gave you Yah's word. Moses did not originate the law. I know that in what we call normal everyday language or talk is a Moses gave them the law. They say Moses gave them manna, but when Messiah was on earth, he said, Moses didn't give you manna. My father gave you the manna. Let's get it right. And then if he could have, he could have went on and said, Moses didn't give you the quail either. Moses didn't have no idea where the meat was going to come from to feed you all that rotted in your teeth. Moses, if he couldn't give you the less, the bread, if he couldn't give you the less, the meat, how dare you think that Moses of his own volition gave you the precious words of Yah. Yah gave it to him and he was the transmitter of that. And you can say Moses gave you the law, but it didn't originate with him. I, I, but he says here, he's going to raise up a prophet of the midst of thee, of your brethren like unto me. Him shall you listen. Wait a minute. Out of all the things that I've ever done for you all, out of showing Pharaoh he was nothing, out of Yah using me to show you all of those beings, those entities, those gods, those deities, those spirits, they were subservient to Yah. Yah used me to do that through his word. When I said Yah was going to do it, he did it. I didn't make it happen. I told you what Yah said. When I told you that y'all was going to bring you out of here when you kill that lamb and put the blood on the doorpost and you put it on the lentil and you roast it and you eat it at night and you stay in the house, you will be saved from when y'all come to destroy. That wasn't of my own volition. It was his word. I gave you his word. I didn't originate. I was just wanting to facilitate giving it to you. And he says, he's going to raise up a prophet in the midst of thee, like unto me, him shall you hearken. So if you don't read carefully, you'll miss the fact that he's saying that this one that's like unto me is going to give you his word. And you'll start preaching to Jesus that has no words that you should hearken to. That's a mythical Jesus. A mythical Jesus allows you to say anything you want to say about him. Oh, you can talk about he died. Oh, you can talk about he raised from the dead. You can talk about that he lived. But what did he say? Moses didn't just say that you would just look at him and see how he lived and where he went and turned water into wine and that he raised the dead and that he got up from the dead and that he healed the sick and that he raised the left. You can see that. But he said there was going to be words that come out of your mouth with explanatory value that will deliver you from what's in your mind, your thoughts. That's what happened with Eve. She had some thoughts that was wrong. Deliver you from the thoughts. Deliver you from things that go on because God's word is power. Jesus said in John 6 and 63, the words that I speak are spirit and they are life. Do you think that the words that Moses spoke was a spirit and life? You haven't read what he told him. If you do what Yah says, it's life to you. And choose life. He said it's going to be like unto me. Verse 16, according to all that thou desirest. Now, this is important according to all that thou desirest or desired of Yahweh your God in Horeb in the day of the assembly saying, let me not hear again the voice of Yahweh my God, neither let me see his great fire anymore that I die not. You all determined that when Yah spoke in mountain shook, that when you all, when he spoke in the, and you can hear the sounds of the wings of, of the different kind of beings that Yahweh brought. When you heard the sounds of trumpets and the blast and the winds, you were scared and said, let not Yah speak to us anymore. You were scared. And you said, you go Moses and hear what he says and bring back 
Yah's instruction for ruling the world, ruling us, having justice and peace in the earth, and being able to go and conquer the enemies that God had promised Abraham that your seed will possess the gates of his enemies. Somebody can say to me, Tim, the seed is singular. I absolutely is singular, but it's also plural. Wait a minute, Tim. How can a singular be plural? Is the body of Christ singular? Yes. He has an individual body. Does he have a plural or a corporate body? Yes. I would submit to you that just like that happened back then, it's one Christ, but yet we become a part of his body and all of us become one echad in agreement with him. Now, he says, they, they have well spoken. He said, neither, I'm going to go back a little bit to get that last part of 16. Neither let me see his great fire anymore, lest we die not. And Yahweh says, they have well spoken in that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee. I will put my words in his mouth. I will put my words in his mouth. Again, Tim, I will put my words in his mouth. How is it that we're teaching a Jesus that don't have Yah's word in his mouth? How is it that we're teaching a Jesus that say, it doesn't matter how you live? All of your sins are in the sea of forgetfulness. But he had the words that he spoke to Ezekiel, the prophet, if a righteous man turns from his righteousness and do that which is wicked and serve idols, and that he does oppression, all his righteousnesses shall be forgotten. We don't teach that. Yet the Messiah, when Yah's words was in his mouth in Matthew 7 and 23, when he says, the many will profess to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name, we cast out devils with the mystical Jesus. And in your name did many wonderful works, and I will profess unto them, depart from me, I never knew you. You that were lawlessness, you knew about his name, you knew about what he had done, but you practiced the lawlessness, you didn't hearken to the words of his mouth, neither did you teach that in such a way that you were faithful enough that he would not tell you not to depart. I will raise a prophet up from among your brethren like unto them. I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. This is what Yah is going to do. And then it says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. I will demand it of him. The mythical Jesus, the one who cares nothing about Sabbath, the one that doesn't care whether I treat my neighbor right, the one that doesn't care if I go and enslave people or rape people or if I get them drugged or if all I do is tell them to come and be saved and there's nothing else to do and God's word doesn't matter. All you got to do is believe that I lived and I died and I rose from the dead. That Jesus. Is not giving you all the words. The mythical Jesus is the equivalent of a man that really finds a good woman and he doesn't realize how good she is in, in the way that she does judgment, in the way she takes care of her home, in the way that she is industrious in the way that she mother, mothers her children, how she's kind to the people in the neighborhood, how she honors the words of the Most High God, and that you can faithfully trust in her no matter what. And all that he sees her as is someone to go in his bedchamber and allow him to relieve himself of sexual tension. And nothing else she does is any good, it doesn't matter. And he finds in his mind, she's easily replaced. This is the way we often devalue that which is of great value. 
So the Bible says again, I need to say it again, verse 19, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall not hearken unto my words, which you speak in my name, I will require it of him. We got a Jesus that we think is going to take us to heaven, but there's nothing else of him that's great value. But I want us to look and see what the Bible has said about his words. Go with me to John. I want you to hear the words that Moses said that would be in his mouth. He said, he said that the words would be in his mouth. So let's go to John 3, 31. John, the one that is the baptizer, in John chapter 3, verse 30 says, he must increase, but I must decrease. This same one that's going to talk about Yah's son, the Messiah, the real Jesus, he's going to get locked up. I'm not going to read it. He's going to get locked up and he's going to be in prison and he's going to want the Messiah to get him out of prison. And the Messiah is not going to go get him out. And he gets concerned and he sends his disciples or his methodists, those that are trained by him, methodists is what I said. And he's going to ask him, are you the one that should come, which have come from the mouth of the holy prophets, which have been which since the world began, or do we look for another? And the Messiah, Jesus says to him, you go tell John both what you do here, here, and see. And he gives a list. It's never just what you see. If you're going to teach the real Christ, if you're really going to teach the Christ that we see in Isaiah, that throne is going to be in righteousness and justice on the earth, then you're going to have to teach what his words say. Other than that, just seeing Jesus and walking and seeing Jesus, how do I know how to live? How do I know what to do? How do I exercise righteous judgment? The mythical Jesus isn't concerned about that. That's why you can see people whoring with a cross on, like that means something. Oh, you got one hanging off your ear, like that means something. That's like a talisman. What an insult to the living word of God. So he said, he must increase, I must de decrease. So John was of great value to the people. They realized that John was about the truth. The words of the most high God came out of his mouth and he was baptizing people and getting them to repent of their sins. And he wasn't even doing it in the temple. What? He was not doing it at the temple. He was out at the river because the spirit of God had been on him from the time he was in his mother's womb, the Holy Spirit. John was out there in the wilderness doing it, not at the temple. The temple had already been corrupted. Read on in your Bible and you'll see where the Messiah calls what they have as the temple, a den of thieves, quoting from Jeremiah. So he says, he that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. I came from the earth, you all. Other prophets came from the earth, you all. But he came from above. Verse 32, and, he, and listen, and what he has seen and heard, that he testified, and no man receiveth his testimony. Moses said, God had put the, God's going to put the words in his mouth. Him, you shall hear. You know he put words in my mouth because you didn't want to hear him anymore. And I went up in the mouth and I got it. And I don't want to hear you no more, God. But listen to Moses. Moses says that a prophet is going to be like unto me. You're going to hear him. He's going to speak the words of your God. This is the real one. If you have one that will contradict or mitigate or ease any of the righteous standards of the Most High God, Son, Yeshua, the Christ, you got the fake Jesus. And because of having the fake Jesus, you'll have continually have injustices. You continually have rape, murder, because the real one is ignored and the fake one is elevated where man can, every man can do as he pleases. Most people have never seen or never even heard the real Messiah, Jesus the Christ, teach or his words. But John said he is from above. 
He's of the earth is earthly. He that speaketh on earth. He cometh from heaven is above all. Verse 32 in John chapter 3, what he has seen and heard, that he testified, and no man receive his testimony. No man is going to have the testimony of the Messiah. We can only repeat what the Messiah has. Verse 33, he that has received his testimony has set to his seal that God is true. God is faithful. God is truthful. Verse 34, for he whom God has sent, speaking of the Christ, speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the spirit, for God giveth not the spirit by measure to him. Unlimited spirit. Verse 35, listen to what it says. The father loveth the son and has given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son of God has everlasting life. He is not talking about believing it, looking at him. He's not talking about believing in what the miracles you see. He has actually said that the Spirit is in him. He has said that God has given his word to him, and nobody else received that testimony. Now, when he says he that believeth on the Son of God has everlasting life, believeth here is what is called a present active participle. He that continually believes on the Son, and what is he talking about believing? That his credentials is from above, but he has God's word in him. That seal is true. And he that believeth on the Son, look, has everlasting life. And if he believeth not the Son, shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Listen to me. Many of us that are called preachers and teachers, we don't teach the words of the Messiah. Often we will divorce the words of the Messiah from what was written about him and what it says he's going to do. And we take a pericope or a little cut away of something that he says out of context or without the whole background of it and say that this is what he said, just believes and not mention his word. This is what the Messiah says about himself, John chapter 4. This is what the Messiah is saying about himself in John 4 and 23. He's talking to a woman at a well. He's talking to a woman that after they had been scattered by the Assyrians, you have some left, some that it mixed in and whatever. That's the background of those people. If you want to see it from right, go look at 2 Kings chapter 17 and read. The Bible says, but the hour cometh. This is what he's telling the woman. And now is when the truth. Let me read this next verse. I think it's important for me to read it because a lot of times people don't understand these talismans the fake Christ and the scapular. This woman was worshiping the fake Yahweh. And I, I need to let you see that. Jesus tells her in J John chapter 4, 22, you worship. You all really worship up here. He says it. Ye worship. And how do I know it's you all? It's a plural. See that, way? See that plural on it? You all worship. You know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jew. We had Moses. You all had the stuff that was set up by Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and Ahab, etc. But the hour cometh, and now is. So the hour is coming and is present now when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, not just spirit. You all got a spirit of worship. So did David have a spirit of worship when they were bringing the Ark of the Covenant back on the cart? But the truth of the matter was, y'all never wanted the Ark on the cart. The ark, he always wanted the Ark carried by cherubim or cherubim. And so he allowed people to take the place of the cherubim and carry his Ark on his shoulders. Tim, where do you get that from? Go read Ezekiel chapter 1 and see how y'all is carried on his throne. The true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. If you don't have the words of Yah, if you don't have God's word, where are you going to get the truth from? The explanatory value that gives light and instruction to his people. It says, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Imagine the Father seeking something. Remind me of, I think it's 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. Andrina, check and see if it's 2 Chronicles 16 and 9 or 1 Chronicles 16 and 9. It's got to be second. Because we all the way down to Asa. He says, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. He's looking for someone that he can show himself strong in their behalf. 
here in the New Testament, look at what Messiah says. The Father seeketh such to worship him, that would worship him in spirit and in truth. Asa had known the truth before. Asa had gotten victory by Yah before. And this time, now he got disease in his feet, and he's going to go to the medium. He's going to go to the necromancer. You still call yourself serving me, but you're not doing it in truth anymore. So when, you, when the son says he seeketh such to worship him in spirit and truth, he says God is spirit. King James got that A there, but if you look right here in the bottom panel, you see that A? See that is? Not there. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Did not the Bible says that Jesus says in John 17 and 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So I just say, Tim, I don't believe you just quoting stuff and I don't even know if it's really in the Bible. Well, we'll just take a moment and just do this for, for the love of your heart. Jesus prays and says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. That's John 17. Do you think that the Messiah, when he says God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth, you don't think he knew that God's word was truth in the fourth chapter? You think he just learned in the chapter 17? Let's be right now. Listen to what he says in John 5, 22. In John 5 and 22, the Bible says, the father judges no man, but have committed all judgment to the son. Now, when you start telling me that, yeah, Jesus don't judge, yeah, Jesus is a love, yeah, Jesus don't pay attention. Now you're saying that your yeah, Jesus is a Jesus of injustice because people have been robbed, they've been raped, they've been murdered, they served other gods, they have incarcerated people, they have blown up people, they have dropped bombs on people, they have destroyed whole cities of black people, just burnt down cities, just like what they did in Rosewood, like they dropped a bomb on our people in Tulsa, the thing that they did in the Red Summer, and you mean to tell me that Jesus is the judge and nothing ever will be done? Then you don't understand judgment that y'all have spoken to Deuteronomy chapter 19. He says he has committed all judgment to the Son. Now you got a Jesus that you don't even understand that he is judging everybody, not the Father. Listen to verse 23, that all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. Our Jesus today doesn't really make you honor the Father because Jesus, in essence, has killed the Father. There's no more justice. There's no more law according to people. There's only grace that came through Jesus the way it is taught. And there's no more righteous requirements that we should fulfill of God's law. But Jesus says all men should honor the son, even as they honor the father. You, When you read what you call the Old Testament, you didn't think adultery was okay. You didn't think murder was okay. You didn't think theft was okay. You didn't think bearing false witness is okay. Now you want to say that I honor the son, but I can do these things. But Messiah said, you got to honor me like you honor the father. I'm not really speaking my words anyway. Next verse. It says, he that honoreth not the son, honoreth not the father which sent him. He that didn't honor Moses, didn't honor God that sent him. One time God said, I'm going to take you up here with me, Moses, and I'm going to put the fear in you. I'm going to put fear on you that they will all, they will fear you forever, Moses. As you, as you mind. Verse 24, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believe on him that sent me has everlasting life. How many people know Jesus? And Ann used to watch me. People tell me I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. And I used to say, tell me five things Jesus said. How about three? Can you tell me one? How is that? How is that honoring his word? Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. Listen to what he says, because I want you to hear him. I want us to learn from him. Verse 24 said that. Now let's skip to 27 to save time. He's talking about the son. He says, and has given him authority to execute judgment also. You got Jesus is love. 
He said he's given them authority to execute judgment also. In other words, to do righteous judgment in the earth and because he is the son of man. Why the son of man? If you understand the son of man is the one that comes from Adam, that comes from God, that has rulership over the whole world to judge everybody at all times. That's his job. Let's look at John 5, 37, because I want, I'm trying to build a case that the mythical Jesus has no words that you have to obey. The mythical Jesus allows you just to look at him and being dead, buried, and resurrection, resurrected, but you don't get a chance to see that he ascended to the Father and that he's up in heaven and that he's reigning from heaven and that he has kingdom and authority and power and he's already asked the Father for the heathen and the heathen are his now under his jurisdiction. The mythical Jesus doesn't tell you that and he is the problem with the world because he doesn't make us do right. He doesn't make preachers leave your daughters alone. He doesn't make preachers not to leave your sons alone. He doesn't make preachers tell the truth. He doesn't allow preachers to feel to understand that they are under him, that they don't get to change his standard based upon their culture. The mythical Jesus is equal to having a rabbit's foot in your pocket. In John chapter 5, 37, listen to what the Bible says. The Father himself, which have sent me, has borne witness of me. You have never heard his, listen, you have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. Is that like a to Moses? They didn't want to hear him. Remember that? And remember Moses challenged the people, when you heard, the, you didn't see a shape. You didn't see anything. So don't go making idols. Don't go making me a fat man in a red suit that's supposed to see me when I'm sleeping and know when I'm awake and know when I've been bad or good and can circumnavigate or go around the world in just almost a split second of time. Don't go worshiping the dead, getting information from them. Don't go doing these kind of things that you do. Don't go trying to get fertility from a rabbit or having sex with everybody. Don't go doing these things. He says, look, the father, he's born witness of me. He spoke through me. Hear me. You've never heard his form, you never heard his voice or seen his shape. So therefore, you I'm the only one you need to listen to are ones that saying what I'm saying. You have not his word abiding in you to your face. He told the woman at the well, you, you all don't know what you worship. He's telling our people here, you, you don't have his word abiding in you. This is why we worship the mythical Jesus. You don't have his word abiding in you. For whom he is sent, you believe not. This is the problem with the mythical Jesus. He keeps one from believing in the true Jesus, the Messiah. His word can't abide in you because you've been taught grace, grace, let you do anything you want to by men that turn the grace of God into lasciviousness, Jude 1, verse 5. You have not his word abiding in you, for he whom he has sent, you believe not. He says, search the scriptures, the scriptures from the mouth of his holy prophets that have been since the world began. For in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me. But you won't come to me that you might have life. You go to that other Jesus. You believe that other gospel. He says, I receive not honor from men. I don't need the Buddha. I don't need Krishna. I don't need Zoroaster. I don't need your pastor. I don't need Tim. I really didn't even need Moses. I don't receive my honor from men. I don't receive my honor from John the Baptist. John the Baptist, when he honors the Father, when he honors me, he gets honor upon himself. I don't need, I'm already validated, authenticated. And if you believe in me, you get salvation. If you don't, you're damned already, according to John 3 and 18. He says again, read it now, verse 40. You will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not my honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of God in you. What's the love of God? Keeping his commandments. I am come in my father's name and you receive me not. When Moses came, you received him for a while. If another shall come in his own name, whether it's Daddy, Grace, Father, the Vine, Jim, Jones, or whatever it is, or what's his name, Benny, him blowing on you, fall all over the floor. 
Charles Taz Russell to come and tell you that the Messiah is not God in the flesh. You believe him. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. But he says, how can you believe which receive honor one from another? You authenticate and validate each other. Uh, we preachers can rub each other on the back and pat each other on the back and yeah, you're good, Reverend. You're good, Doctor. There's a, oh, you're good, Apostle. Oh, Bishop, Bishop, Bishop. Oh, Apostle Evangelist. How can you believe which receive honor from one another and seek not the honor that come from God only? You mean you don't have respect for a prophet, Tim, or for an evangelist? Let me tell you something. If I'm gonna have respect for you like that, I need to. I, if I hear you speaking His word, if I see you doing what He says doing, the honor that I'm giving to God, it will flow to you. I will honor you because you're giving the message. But when you're not giving the message, the only thing I can do is call you a, what they call a reverend or a pastor or a bishop because that's what other people call you and I'm not trying to be offended because the Bible did call false prophets, still call them prophets. But those that honor Yah, according to Psalm 15, those are who you're supposed to honor. I, I read Psalm 15. He honors those that love Yah. And it says, and seek not to honor. And let's read that again, because this is where we as men that teach. Here's where that we say we love the real Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ. How can you believe that receive honor one from another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? We should be seeking his word to receive the honor that comes from him through his word. Tim, where you get that from? I can make I can make you famous if you do this. And what do you mean famous? How are you gonna make me famous? I can I, if you do what I say right here, I will guarantee you might not be liked, but you will become a person of renown to who? To God. What does he say to Sam? What does he say to Eli in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30? Those that honor me will I honor. He had his word, those that honor me, I will honor. Those that despise me, I will lightly esteem a curse. I will curse. Same thing. You want honor? You really want to be famous? I'm talking about to who it matters. Seek the honor that come from God by honoring his word. You don't need a Jesus that did not honor the Father's word. But honor the words of your culture. We're going to include everything and bring it to God and offer it as a sacrifice. Jesus said after that, listen. In other words, he's saying it was impossible for you to do that. But notice what he says in verse 45. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. I will accuse you to the Father. You won't need what they call the devil. I will be your adversary. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. Okay? Do not think that. I got every right to do it, but I'm the one that's going to do the judging. So let me show you who's going to accuse you, and I won't even have to. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom you trust. Why? Listen to what he says. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? What words? What did he say before? Moses was the prophet, and one of the keys to understanding the word of God is when you read the first five books, Torah. And you start moving into Joshua and Judges and the rest of them, you will note that they always have to quote Moses. They always have to say what Moses said because there's one Torah. And this is why Messiah is saying, even at this day, if you don't trust Moses, if you don't listen to Moses, you can't believe me. Even if somebody has never read anything from Moses, there's enough of Moses quoted that you will still get glimpses of Moses to believe Messiah. But the proper way is to learn Moses, especially for these people. Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, I, I want us to understand. I've read this before, and I read it. I read it many times in Isaiah nine and seven. His his kingdom will be based upon judgment. That means righteous judgment and righteousness, and the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. But why does he have to deal with that? Because that's in chapter nine. Listen to chapter one. Here is the teaching of the Messiah. These are the teachings that the Messiah will embody in the earth. 
Notice what he says, cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Somebody said, I didn't see Jesus say that he told you you would know the doctrine if you do it. Don't play with me. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Seek justice. Relieve the oppressed. Didn't I just read that last week? Is that the zeal of the Lord? I mean, the Lord of hosts was upon him to preach the gospel to the, to the poor, to give sight to the blind, to relieve the oppressed, to bring the one out of captivity. I know what I'm talking about. The same thing that Moses was teaching is the same thing that Isaiah is teaching and the real Jesus, not the one to give you Christmas. Not the one you put that little fake stone on top of a doggone tree and say that's him and put a little white baby. I don't care if it's a black baby. I don't serve a baby. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Is this what yeah, Jesus teach? If it doesn't, he allows people to continue to do evil. They don't have to learn to do well. They don't have to seek judgment. They don't have to relieve the oppressed. They don't have to judge for the fatherless. They don't have to plead for the widow. That Jesus that will allow you to go to heaven anyway is just like having a scapular or having an other thing on your neck, and that's the cause of the problem in the world, especially when you talk about America as a Christian nation. And he says, come now, let us reason together, say of Yahweh, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. They shall be red like crimson and as wool. I mean, let me read it again. They shall be red like crimson. No, though they be red. Oh, I don't know. Got your mind right. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Do you honor the son like you honor the father? Do you understand that the words were given to him without, the spirit was given to him without measure? He speaks the words that the one that he has said. Though your sins be like that, Israel. Though your sins be like that, Tim. Though your sins be like that, America. If you cease to do evil and learn to do good, if you would listen and reason with God, take his word in your mind, look at his word, understand his word, your sins can be moved. And if you be willing and obedient to his word, Moses said to him, shall you hearken, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured with the sword for the mouth of Yah has spoken it. What did the Messiah said? The time will come when Yah said, I will come back and I will separate the wheat from the chaff and I will burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. John 15 said, every branch in me that rebels and will not bear forth fruit. They take them away and men gather them and burn them. Oh, don't, don't play with me because he says a whole lot about that in Revelation. But he says, listen, how has the faithful city become a harlot? It was full of judgment. There was a time you listened to Moses. It was full of judgment and righteousness. And look, righteousness lodged in it, but now murders. Because you stopped listening to the word of Yah. And I will submit to you that the true Jesus is the word of God in the flesh. The real one. He's not, he's not a little dude walking around with something like a gown on and, and got blonde hair and blue eyes. I, I'm not even talking about an afro now. I'm talking about the real one. Although he would have been black, what we call black. We ain't talking about just the person now. We're talking about the words that came out of his mouth that were affixed to that person. If you just have the person and you don't have the word, you got the mythical Jesus because he has no power. It says, how the faithful city become a harlot? It went away from his word. It was full of judgment and righteousness lodged in it. Why? Because they heard the word of Yah from Moses. It said, your silver has become dross. It is your wine is mixed with water. Your money is getting weak. Your wine is getting weak. Your princes are rebellious. Why? Because they didn't hear the word of Yah. And I submit to you that the real Jesus, not the mythical Jesus, is the word of Yah personified. The princes of rebellion, companions of thief, everyone loves gifts and followeth after rewards. This is why we have a legal injustice system. This is why we have an American Christianity that is full of fields of dirt and every kind of form of debauchery that can be. Every kind of crime is committed in the church. What people say, well, you come to the church, it's a hospital. Read it in the Bible. The Messiah says, he's quoting what Isaiah says so many times. 
even in the New Testament. So don't go and say, well, I don't see him quote this exactly. You will see him quote the, quote the compendium or the summary of what Isaiah says. He says, everyone loves gifts and follow at the reward. They judge not the fatherless, neither do they cause the widow to come before them or come to them. We got problems in the land because of wickedness. But listen to what Yahweh said. You want to talk about him being a savior and a redeemer? Therefore, say of Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, I will ease me of my adversaries and avenge me of my enemies. The problem is we haven't presented Yah before the people. We haven't let his word condemn. We haven't let his word destroy those that need to be destroyed or destroy the weakness in their hearts so that they can be saved. We're preaching a cultural, let's get happy, Jesus. Let's get rid of what they call the patriarchy that somebody set up. And Yah is a patriarch. He had a patriarch. He had 12 sons that came from Yaakov, Isaac, and, and, and Israel, as well as Abraham. He never got rid of the patriarchy. What you got is a patriarchy that is not like the patriarchy of God. You got one that's oppressive, that's abusive, and it's out of order with Yah because we don't follow the real word of God. And so now we get feminists that say, what you know, I'm going to go against what God said, but you're going to face him one day. You're going to face him. You tear the order up of God's word. Y'all know what he was talking about through his, through his son and through the apostles that gave us explanation. Yahweh said, I'm going to avenge me of my enemies. My enemies are not just those that will attack you physically. They affect, they affect you with propaganda. They affect you with false teachings. That's why I would tell the people to get rid of the false prophets. He says, then I will turn my hand upon thee and will purge away thy dross and will take away thy sin. Do what I say. Reason with me. I will get rid of your dross. You will have value. I'll get rid of your sin. And look, and I will restore judges at, as the first and your counselors as in the beginning. Afterward, you will be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. This is what the real Jesus teaches. We're teaching every son to get saved, follow Jesus, believe it. Which one? It said Zion will be redeemed with judgment. He said, well, that's the Old Testament. Well, well let's, let's not argue. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 says to the people, and I want you to hear it. I'm going to look down here. Okay, I'm going to give myself eight minutes. It says, at the time when Moses was there in the 19th verse, but I'm going to go to 22 and let you see in verse 22, you have come to Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. This is New Testament saying that we've already come to Zion, the place that's supposed to be filled with justice and righteousness. How did the writer of Hebrews get us to that? Well, he got us to this by telling the people that we're doing wrong. Don't be like Esau in verse 16, 12 and 16, a fornicator, profane person who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. You want to sell your birthright and follow the other Jesus? Go ahead. Verse 17 says, for after you know when he would have inherited a blessing, he was rejected for he found no place of repentance. We People tell you you can repent anytime you want to. There are times when y'all won't let you repent. Look at it. He found no place for repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Now he says, for you are not come to the mountain that might be touched when you didn't want to hear y'all and burn with fire when you didn't want to hear y'all uh, to blackness and darkness and tempest when you were scared of y'all and to the voice and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words which they that heard entreated that they should not be spoken to them anymore when you didn't want to hear y'all. You wanted to hear Moses. For they could not endure that which was commanded if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it would be stoned or thrust to through with a dart. So terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. And y'all got me coming up because y'all didn't want to hear y'all. So when I come down, you better hear me because I know where I got my instruction. But he said, but you, what we call New Testament people, you will come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly of the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and the spirits of just, that word, dikos, that means righteous people, 
that's in his kingdom made perfect or complete. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, the one that got his word that's like unto Moses. Moses got his word. Now you come to Jesus, the one that goes to God before you, the mediator of the New Testament and the blood of sprinkling that's speaking better things than that of Abel. When Abel died, his blood cried out to God for vengeance. Can't kill me. Now we got the blood of the Most High Son that is there that can either be there for vengeance for you or for vindication. Do you listen to him? Do you follow him? And you get a chance for salvation. Do you trample underfoot the blood of God? Well, look at it. See then that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him to speak on earth, Moses, much more shall we, much more shall not we escape if we turn away him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he promised yet more, I shake not the earth only but heaven also. And this word, which much more signifies the removing the things that can be shaken as of the things that are made, made with hands, tabernacle, candlestick, altar. It says the things that, we can, that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. In other words, now instead of sprinkling an altar blood, I'm going to do it in your heart. I'm going to do it in your conscience. I'm not going to write on tables of stone. I'm going to write on your heart. Then you're going to go against me now? Then he says, wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved, that kingdom that's in justice and righteousness. Let us have grace that we may serve Yah acceptably our god is a consuming fire but we have a problem often we don't realize that yah is the same god we've allowed people to tell us stuff that we don't need to hear now let's go ahead and take this thing to the end we got a problem with injustice and we got a problem with people hearing the real christ so let's go to jeremiah and let's see what the problem is because remember that false Christ, the wicked Christ that is the problem with the world, that's used like a talisman. He is not the answer to Jeremiah's plea, but the one that Zacharias talked about that as he is promised, as he is promised by his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that he would deliver us out of the hand of our enemies and those that hate us, the oppressors, those that do all of the things that oppress and bring about injustice. Jeremiah was told this by Yah. And remember when Jeremiah is being told something by Yah, this is actually the Christ before he became human, telling Jeremiah what is going on. It says, run ye to and fro through the street. Let me make this clear. When Yah was speaking to Jeremiah, he was still getting words from the Father. That's why he is called the angel or the Malak of Yahweh, the messenger of Yahweh. Although he is Yahweh the Son, he was already coming, but he had not taken on fleshly body. And I just want to make sure that's clear because sometimes people might miss that. So he told Jeremiah, run to and fro throughout the streets of Jerusalem and see now and know, seek in the broad places thereof if you can find a man. Yeah, that might bother the patriarchy, but I'm just, I mean, the people that don't like the patriarchy, he says, but this is what it says, find a man. If there be any the executive judgment, in other words, that he's bringing about justice and that seeketh the truth because God's going to be worshiped in truth and I will pardon it. If we get justice in the land, if we cease to do evil and learn to do good, he can take our sins and move them. He can actually build us up a nation that will wor worship him in spirit and truth. He says, if there be any that execute it, judgment and seek truth, and I will pardon it. This is important for us to understand. Next verse, it says, and though they say the Lord liveth, surely they swear, they swear falsely. You mean to tell me that that's false? Yes, when you start saying, God, just let everything go. We got Jesus, and we don't need them, but Jesus to just preach Jesus and not preach his word. You give the myth of Jesus, and that is the problem with the world today. Listen to what it says in verse 3. O Yahweh, are not thine eyes upon the truth? 
Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they refuse to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They refuse to return. They keep doing injustice to one another. Therefore, I said, surely these are poor. They are foolish, for they know not the way of Yahweh. When the Messiah was here, he says in John 14 and 6, I am the way. Surely they have not known the way of Yahweh, nor the judgment of their God. Let's bring it down to the last part of this. Yahweh prophesied. Zechariah said he had prophesied since the world began through his holy prophets, that he would deliver us from the hand of our enemies, that we could serve him without fear. The Messiah, the Messiah told the people uh, many times, if you believe Moses, you would have believed me. When he gave the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, he had Abraham coming out of his mouth say they have Moses and the prophets. And I was going to read Luke chapter 24, but I'm not going to read Luke 24, but he tells them about himself through all of the law and the prophets. If you want to write it down, Luke 24, 24, read the rest of the chapter. But listen to what Yahweh says and which Zacharias would have known about. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh. I will raise unto David a righteous branch and a king shall reign and prosper. He shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. That other Jesus won't do that. The scapular wouldn't do it. The rosary won't do it. The gentrifluxion won't do it. Let's see. The hallelujah running pews, jumping pews, rolling in the floor, letting Benny Hinn breathe on you will not do it. Listening to preachers and, and singing a lot of songs that you repeat the same words over and over. You can call them way maker, heartbreaker, or whatever mind bit. I don't know what they say. And saying that and, 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 and then go out and live weekly, that's not going to do it. It says it's got to be done in the kingdom of this king that reign and prosper. He's going to execute judgment and justice in the earth. If we're in that kingdom and we are part of his body, we're going to do the same thing. The next verse says, in his day, Judah shall be saved. That's what, that's what Zechariah said. He sent us a horn. Israel shall dwell safely that we can serve him without fear. He's delivering us out of the hand of our enemies and those that hate us like he did with Moses when he told Pharaoh, let my people go. How much more shall we then believe that he will do the same thing to us in America? We have no power. We have not the power to economically hold people down. We have no power to say this is our land and you get out. We have no power to control what's going on through the media. We don't control our schools. We don't control the internet. We don't control the weapons of war. We don't even control pharmaceutical companies. We don't control any of the system. But we ought to be able to control whether we execute righteousness and justice in our land and in our house. He says, in his, in his days, Judah shall be saved, Israel shall dwell safely, and this shall be the name whereby he shall be called Yahweh Sidkenu. Look at it. The Lord, our righteousness. If you look down with me, you see Yahweh. I'm going to move it out. Look at, look at my thing. You see the numbers, 18, 19, and 20. So it's Yahweh Sidkenu. That's why I said Yahweh Sidkenu. Yahweh, our righteousness. He is supposed to be our righteousness. Are we in him and he in us? This is why he can say in Romans 8 and 4 that the righteousness of God's law or his words can be in our heart and in our mind and we can fulfill it. And it says he can dwell safely. This is the name whereby he'll be called Yahweh our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that they shall no more say the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, okay? He won't be saying that anymore. But the Lord liveth, which brought, which brought up and led the seed out of the house of Israel, out of the northern country, uh, read it again, they brought, which led the seed out of the north country and from the countries wherein I had driven them and they shall dwell in their own land. This is the thing. Judah is still scattered in countries. 
Judah was scattered in country during the time of Messiah. And we did not want him. We didn't want to do what he said. And so that other Jesus, the fake Jesus, the one that I say is the problem with the world because he doesn't deal with justice and righteousness is the one that will allow these things to go on and let you feel like you're going on to heaven while you're still wicked or while we still are doing things and not getting things right that have been done in so far as uh, legal system, incarceration, land taken, people have been murdered and the murderer not put to death. The land is full of wickedness. I would submit to you that if that fake Jesus hadn't been taught, and the one that's in the scripture had been taught and people would have heard, yes, we would still have problems, but people would know where the solution is. Most people don't know where the solution to our problems was, so they want to go to Sigmund Freud, Abraham Maslow, Carl Jung, and the psychologist. And they're not consistent. So let's end with the real Jesus versus the mythological Jesus, the rabbit foot Jesus the talisman Jesus, the horseshoe Jesus. Revelation chapter 20 and 11 tells you how this real one, the real Jesus, the Messiah works. John says, I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whom the face of the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was no place found for them. And I saw the dead, Yes, the dead that died in your family last week, last month, last year, 10 years ago, five years ago, three years ago, and when you die. I saw the dead today. He ain't going to say he saw a scapula. Look, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of the things which were written in the book according to their works, according to your work. People tell you your works don't matter. You got a scapula, brown scapula. You got a rose with beads. You got a cross. You may have a what they call it, a St. Christmas cross. I, I'm a Baptist. I'm a Methodist. I'm a Holy. I'm a Presbyterian. I believe in Kemet. I believe in Ifa. I believe in the spirit. I believe in a higher power. This is what people will be able to say. I believe that always leads to God. Well, I didn't believe that there was no God. I just thought when you were dead, you were dead. It says that the dead were judged out of the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. This is not the mythical Jesus. This is the one that came to bring grace, but he always had law. He always had truth, and he gave a people a reprieve, a grace period. But that grace period did not mean you don't owe me the righteousness that is in the law. You still owe me to obey my voice. Moses told you that. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell, the word here, Hades, the Hades, the underworld, delivered up the dead that were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works and death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life were cast into the lake of fire then you go to 21 and you move down to the eighth verse and the bible gives one promise he that overcometh in verse 7 shall inherit all things. You want to inherit the kingdom of God? Paul has told you, and I preached it many times, who shall not inherit the kingdom of God? But he that overcomes this world and the mythological Jesus and the culture of this world and everything else shall inherit all things in italics. He'll inherit all, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, didn't Zechariah said he comes to deliver us out of the hand of our enemies? And all them that hate us, that we might be able to serve him without fear and holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. But we still fear our friends. We still fear our family. We still fear the preachers. We still fear somebody not going to like us. We're going to lose our job. But the fearful and the unbelieving 
You mean tell me God just got one way? I believe in my Jesus, my own way. I got my own personal Savior. And the unbelieving and the abominable, yeah, we practice abominable things and abominable habits and the murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers. That word sorcerer, if you look down here, see the word from Achilles? Those that like to get into drugs and deal in other spirits from the sorcerers and the idolaters and all liars. Some people lie so fast. They, My daddy used to tell me when I was young and I tried to get out of trouble, boy, you'll tell a lie quicker for uh, credit than you will for cash. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Last comment on that. Did you notice, do you notice people say that this Jesus, that they preach the mythological Jesus, he hates the sin and loves the sinner? You know, you could take a piece of scripture and say that he loves the sinner, but he doesn't love sinners, like you say. He tells them to come unto him and take his yoke. He tells them to bow the knee. They got to, they got to see him as Lord. They got to bow. He'll just love you like you are and you do what you want to do. But look at this. Let's say it's true. He hates the sin and loves the sinner, like people say. Why is he putting the fearful, the people, in the lake of fire? The unbelief, not just unbelief, not just fear. Why is he not just putting abominations in the lake of fire, but the abominable? Why is he putting the murderers in the lake of fire, not just murder? See, murder is a category. Murderers are a category of people that do murder. Why is he put the whoremongers, not just poor dumb, and the sorcerers? And I could go all the way through. And all liars. Why not lies? If you say he hates the sin and loves the sinner, why is he? Why do you worry? Why is this a warning? Just because, like your righteousness is affixed to you that come from Christ and you become righteous, your sin is affixed to you. And if you're a liar, you become a liar and liars will have their part. The problem that I see in this world and the reason for such injustice that we have is the mythological Jesus, the fake Jesus that don't tell the truth. And therefore, all of the things that we see in this world, they don't have a remedy. There is no remedy for injustice apart from the real Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ. None. So when I talk about the rest of this injustice in my next message, you're going to already know, here's my remedy. You're going to be able to understand why these things happen. There are many things that work its way out, but it all goes down to this. The mythological Jesus has supplanted in the minds of people the real, the true, who gets his word from the Most High God. With that, I'm going to close this message and go into discussion if there's going to be in it. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the 1,189 chapters that's in the Bible that I use. Over 7,000, 700,000 and 740 something words that I've read before. And they still don't fully tell us who you are or your son. Yes, and we still have people to feel like we take too much time talking about you. And you know what we do at our time. You know how long we Facebook, YouTube, Netflix, Prime, go play sports, gossip on phone, go do whatever we do and relegate you to a small amount of time. But Father, in your word, you give us the keys to justice. You give us the keys to righteousness. You give us the keys to life and you personified your word in your son. Help us to see him, to know the difference between the true and the false, so that we don't walk around with good luck charms, using them in the place of obeying your word that you gave to your son, because surely, as you've shown us in the book of the Revelation, you will require them. Help us to take you seriously before we die. 
Help us take you seriously before our loved ones die. And have never, ever considered who you are based upon what you've said and that you've transmitted through Moses and your son and his apostles and prophets. Amen, amen, and amen. I open this class for discussion if there's to be any discussion today. If there's any discussion, we're now open. Good message. Um, I don't know if you hear me. So. I do. You you sound like you sound like you got a little bass in your throat. Do you want to get rid of that for me? <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't really talked a lot this morning, so it's just like still kind of probably I started, but um, it's really sad because you know, I mean, as you were speaking, and particularly coming out of well revelation towards the end. I, I was thinking that people always talk about, and we've heard it not too long ago, that this is the, the Jesus of the New Testament. But people won't even sometimes realize, and I think I know why with that too, at least in part, that he's speaking He's speaking to, to John, to uh, people who's supposed to be of the New Covenant. So what about you know, when people start saying that, he's saying, I gave you space to repent, and you didn't. Nobody wants to hear repent anymore because, I mean, we like we like ourselves. We like what we do. And to, to, to do away with that means I have I really have to make a sacrifice and, and, and be subservient. I'm looking for my charger because my phone is low. And, um, but... It's, it's just amazing, and, and and I was thinking as there were people people claim to like Revelation. Movies are made after Revelation. The books books are made after Revelation. People talk about it, and I said, but then if you couple along with it's grace, 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 then you're going to be raptured. It's like they tag team. Okay. So <laughs> there is no way that I'm going to receive any kind of judgment. Because I can live like I want to. But see, you was coming out of Jeremiah, and uh, Jeremiah tells you that your heart or our hearts basically will deceive us. It do, it does. And so he it, it says that. So it 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 needs to go under scrutiny, his scrutiny. But um, it's it's it's, it's really really sad that um. We got so many people, and especially black ones. You know, I mean, it, it's really all. But like, why well, we don't want to hear? It's so scary. And, and when you started out, I, I hope I'm not rambling, but just different thoughts that come to my mind. You know, when you was talking about when you said Moses, we want you to go before, and I'm like, <laughs> they may, maybe they should have heard it from the Lord themselves. But I find in the scriptures that. It really just doesn't matter. I mean, it, it's always on the heart. Mm -hmm. You know, you can you can hear the truth and, and still reject. I, you know, Samuel, like, rebuke and Saul in the 15th chapter, I think, of First Samuel. He's rebuking him. And he's like, okay, 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 okay. But let's go on out <laughs> Let's go on out here anyway. I need, you, I need you to do me a favor, you know. Make the people think I'm still good, you know. So I was just like, okay, it's ah, uh, it really it really shows a lack of um hearing the scripture. You I pulled your scripture up, Gary. I pulled your. It was so I'm powerful. On, I'm, on, I'm on my phone. It's okay. I'll phone. I'll read it. I'm just. Jeremiah 17. No, I pulled the one with Saul. It was wicked, and he said, "Sir, let's go. Let's go do it anyway." I I, I just said, "Let me pull that up." It says, and Saul said this. Yeah. He t first he told me he rejected him. Okay, I, I just I just yeah. need to read it because you brought that up, and there's a possibility that somebody have no clue what you're talking about, okay? So okay, okay. God gave Saul a job. Saul didn't do it. And so Saul tells Samuel the prophet in 1 Samuel 15 and 20, 
And Saul says unto Samuel, I've obeyed the voice of the Lord. So, you know, that's the key to life right there. Torah is the voice of the Lord. The commandments are the voice of the Lord. I've obeyed the voice of the Lord. And I have gone the way Yahweh sent me. And I have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Those were enemies that, that the people of Israel had. And they attacked Israel when they were trying to come out of the land of promise. It says, but the people took the spoil, the sheep the oxen and the chief things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord God in Gilgal. And Samuel says, have Yahweh great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fact of rams for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of Yahweh, he has rejected thee from being king. It's all said, I have sinned. I have transgressed the commandment of Yahweh and your words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now, therefore, I pray you, pardon my sin and turn again with me that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and Yahweh have rejected you from being king of Israel. And Samuel turned to go his way, and Saul laid her, and look, Samuel turned to go away. He laid her hold on the skirt of his mantle, and Samuel said, the Lord has rent the kingdom from Israel from you this day, and has given it to a neighbor. Better, better than you so that's what you were saying yes, what was your purpose in saying it now no purpose in saying it yeah about what people worshiping and Saul didn't Saul want to go up and worship anyway after he done stuff what were you going to say because we want we want to do what we want to do and still get the stamp of approval got it you know, I, you you can rebuke me all day long, but anyway, it's 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 yeah. sad because we have the contrast between Saul and well, it's not sad for us because we should be looking at it. There's the, we see that the king is Yahweh, Most High. I think it's the eighth chapter, and then we go on, and I I I know I think it's the twelfth chapter where the thundering and the lightning scares the people and so forth. And then I'm just going to go, go up to where we are in the 15th chapter. We see in Saul being rebuked. And he had, and he was given the spirit. And he was messing up, but he was still given opportunities. You know, and then we see David. You know, the Bible say David was a man after God's own heart. But we see David acting foolish and talking about the sacrifices there. We see in Psalm 31 and Psalm, I think it's 32 and Psalm 51 how David would suffer physically and let us say spiritually, people like to say emotionally and only only say on that. And in this way, he said, you you don't want sacrifice. You want a contrite heart. We 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 I'm saying that in, in general, if anybody falls in the category of like enjoying sin and, and not feeling the the rebuke of God, that's 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 rebellion. And to go through his 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 um his rebuke, his justice, his um his way of getting our attention and saying, Hey, I'm 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 trying to give you a space, but it, it's 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 sad. And you put you, you talked about I can't remember if you said Ecclesiastes three. Um was it three? Not Ecclesiastes, Ezekiel. Like if you don't turn, for, if a righteous man turn from his way. 18 and 33. 18. He, he does it two times in yeah, Ezekiel. Jer Jeremiah too. Jeremiah says some of the same thing when I think in the, the 18th chapter. But it, it's, it's really interesting that a lot of the injustice that takes place when people do it themselves, they want the forgiveness. But when somebody else do it, if it's a wrong and end, then they want the justice. That's very hypocritical. And the scripture will show that God, uh, through through the Son, He he's rebuking hypocrites. 
I don't see anywhere in the scripture that I can't think of because I was just trying to think of a few minutes ago when the Lord is happy with false prophets. <laughs> when the priests who don't do it, or when 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 the priests don't do what they're supposed to, he burned up some in Leviticus. Then you go on and look, skip and you go to Judges and then he's like, I have have you and your son killed. Then, I mean, we 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 see later later on that the prophets coming and 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 and, and the kings. You see the bunch of false prophets, and we really supposed to be the, the priests to the nations, just like just like um in what we call the Old Testament. They were really supposed to be priests to the to, to the nations, and these people so so called studying the scriptures giving bits and pieces and then want, if you know just a little bit more than I do then I'm offended mm. Apollos said when they when Aquila and Priscilla start talking to him you don't see that he had an attitude mm -mm. I'm seeing Saul and Barnabas now I don't know if it was all that was just with the nephew John Mark because I think Anne's point on it was really good. Like, well, maybe you just felt like it was too much. Was it alignment? He's like, he like, I can't do this. But where's this one or the other? If Saul, Saul the one that knew. I mean, not that, not that Barnabas didn't know, but it's like, oh, are we, if we read the scripture, we understand what, how I say the body fit together. And we all have our, our parts, but if I if I can't hear wisdom when it's coming, then I'm all, I'm just stupid, double, triple fall. It's just so dumb. But um, I, I, I see in the prop, I can't remember it's both Jeremiah. They said they ain't gonna listen to you. There be some, there be some, but it with the, the what I guess is just so really really sad of those who are supposed. to sitting in that position and that might be because I wasn't thinking necessarily of that when when I said Samuel 15 but he was in position I was just thinking we want to do it we want to do it and then be okay but the fact that when, when you started reading I'm like yeah and, and these people sitting in position and Paul said I, I didn't shine to give the whole 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 truth and how when we read the scriptures we can't see that these people knew it this even the woman at the well knew something she knew some history she did <laughs> like, had a spirit too <laughs> Paul, Paul, Paul knew history Jephthah knew history he did. I mean Jude they knew history <laughs> Jesus quoting the first testament all up and down it, you know but yeah it, it was a very good message. I don't feel like I'm adding anything, but it's, but it's, you it's did. nice because you mentioned how much time you watch maybe Prime or things like that. But if we don't give the Lord time, whether both together and on our own, there's a voice that there's a voice and call it broadcast. And I'm like, that is so good. And that broadcasting is going to it's going to come up as a product. You know, one's going to die. The, the, the sun's going to beat down on the earth. You know, it's, it's not going to take root. Bird's going to come by. It's going to be tangled with the weeds. And that's, that's analogous for many things that would take our attention from the Lord. But you know, how can they hear if they, have, they don't have one to proclaim? Well, we, we, we listen to a whole bunch of other stuff. We better have, we've got to have that which is holy, that which is wholesome. And it is, and it is a sacrificial way. But I like it because that verse used to trip me up a long time ago. He says, "Up my, how's it go? My, 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 my love is not grievous. How did that go? I'm, I'm trying to. See, I'm not see what it right. they would tell me the words John, that they, you know. John, John, huh? be like, it's not grievous. The commandments are not obeying. grievous. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, First John five yeah. and two. So, let me, since it's that so important, important let me read it and not quote it, Gary. Let me read it, not quote it. Okay, it's I'm, I'm actually doing that because somebody else wanted to see it, they could see it because I that when I could have quoted you gave me a, you threw me a softball. <laughs> okay, uh, first John 5 and 3 says, For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not yeah. grievous, and that and look. 
And the so, word here is oppressive. His commandments mm-hmm. are not, oh, they free you. Good God Almighty. So, so when we, and I think you, you mentioned John 17 and 17. Yes. You know, but when it's, a, if we find it oppressive and grievous, then we need to ask ourselves, why? And the liberation is goes back to 1 and 74, many other scriptures of Luke, you know, because we, we, well, we believe a lie, you know, there's a, there is a delusion stuck at Thessalonians. There's a delusion that come and, and we love, we love this world more than we love him, but we're not thinking eternally. We, if we don't think eternally, then we don't really, we don't really trust God's word in the first place. Oh, he going, he going to forgive me. No, he's not. <laughs> you know, he, 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 even if you don't, he not going to, he's got too many voices out here. And, um, yeah, it, it, it I, my, it was it was good and I'm listening and I'm listening. So we just we just have to be ready to to die daily and that could be in our circle, it could be it could be in a big circle whereby we are a witness to unto him for many. It could be with I'm gonna use the metaphor with stone. I think in some countries they might still do that, but you know, whatever and to understand, okay, you know, do 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 I do I really trust in this? And as we mature, I think we continue to grow closer to that. But right now, it's like, what's the point of going to church? So called, so called church. Did you just do what you want to do? You really find out. It's you're good about, look, I Gary. Luca, it's Luca, good look. I said filthy. I said filthy Luca the other night, and you said make merchandise of you. So I don't. I think I might have been saying a Paul, Pauline expression. I think you went to a Peter, or they might both say it. Same thing. It is a business. Yes. It is a business. Gary is good. Bring your money, jump up and down, live like you want to, and come back <laughs> the next time and do the same thing. It is. It, there are few who really talk about obeying the word of God. All right, I'm gonna let somebody else talk. When you too. mentioned that about the, uh, going to the building. See, people that like the Falcons or the Broncos or they like the Hawks or the Bulls or whatever, they go either to the stadium or the arena and they say, we won, we won. And they be jumping up and down. But that doesn't make you a member of the team. They'll tell you that you you know that you're the fifth man or the sixth man in basketball or or that you all giving the team spirit. But I promise you, if it's if it's football, you won't get hit, at least not on the field. You won't get dirty. You won't get a check. You won't get any commercial money. You won't get any free Gatorade or beer. You won't get to go in the locker room, but you say we won. Our team won. Well, it's our church is done. You get to be a spectator. If <laughs> you can see in Trina's face, you get to be a spectator, <laughs> and we're serving Jesus. We sung, we jumped, we jumped up and down. We serving Jesus. Well, when they playing football, when they get in a huddle, they are discussing. When they come out of the huddle, it's time to act. When the basketball coach bring the people to the side and he's drawing, he's drawing up a play. Well, if you don't enact it, that the thing, uh, if you're behind, you lose. When it comes to the most high, he got a plan drawn up. He got it set, well, we can get in the huddle. But after we get out of the huddle, (laughs) we just go back and do what we want to do. Because we don't have that, we don't have that plan. Mm. We have that little thing that they give us when we walk in. It's a program. Okay. In your program. Okay. And this is the plan for the day. Coming here, somebody's going to pray. We're going to sing three songs. This is the plan. It's just like the funeral. A program. <laughs> we go to the we go we go to the funeral today. And everything, and you know, we, the benediction. And you smile at each other and you leave and you go home. It's, remember when you used to visit a church I used to go to and you said, I don't like this. These people fake. They fake. 
They gonna tell me I you can't wear pants. You got to wear a dress. You can still I know, you. I know, but I know you say you like dress, but you say you can still whore in a dress. Yeah, that I mean, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I mean, it's that bait and switch thing. You know, it's where we gonna say we gonna look like we're righteous mm -hmm. as, as opposed to actually being righteous. So you see women in skirts and dresses and long dresses and long sleeves, but you see them pregnant with no husband, yes. or children with no husband. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you know people living together and they not married, or you know people are cheating with each other, but they're dressed appropriately. And it's a choir. They're dressed appropriately. But look. We were told I got chewed out one time by a man that got to be a bishop because I didn't, I didn't have a, I didn't have a coat on, and at the time I was too fat for my coat. I didn't want to tell everybody I got too big for my coat, but I, but I was being rebellious, and but you could look outside and see people with a suit, a coat on in the summer. I'm talking about with a little bow tie on, and they selling bean pies, and they selling something called the Final Call. Well, they sometimes they look more dignified yeah. there are a lot of people in the church yeah. Yeah. yeah but that's that's the uniform right it makes me it makes <laughs> the me said disgusting again. they were gary i said it made me think in part of the parable where there's two sons and the father asked them to do something and one of them say i do it but he don't <laughs> that's what we got yeah <laughs> i said yeah i love i love the lord I'll I'll do it, but then you know you don't. We really but don't. We don't have to. Out like I'm not, but I, I I'm thinking about this, and I'm wrong. I'm gonna I'm gonna honor the father and do what he say. And um, yeah, it, it's it's amazing, and, and and we can't we can't. Peter does say, "Be ready to give an answer." He's like, Paul say, "Study." Jesus say, "Take my yoke and learn." Paul say, "Study." Peter said, "Be ready to give an answer." And no, no, the, all of those things are 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 rejected. I remember, I think I was about ten, maybe maybe eight. And you asked me this question. This is one of the questions you asked me, and I, it hurt my feelings, but I never forgot it. And I was, I was like, I think I like the question, but he hurt my feelings. And, uh, yeah, you said. Okay, I might be confused with time. I might be. I might have been about seven. Uh, this might have been when I was seventeen. You asked me a question, and you said, "Have you read the Bible?" And I said, "No, I've read parts of it." And you said, "This is not verbatim, but it's along the line." I think you said you have. No, I think it might have been like, "Why?" <laughs> and I'm thinking. I like to play. I, was, I didn't like to read. Really do it. But then you said, "Well, what if?" You before the Lord one day, and He said, "I left, I left my word." How do you think He's gonna put about it if you didn't read it? I was like, "Oh my gosh!" <laughs> and then I was like, "Well, I'm gonna read it." Did you understand what He said in Dream? Shortly thereafter, He, 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 he said, I, I, asked, "I read." Hold on, Gary. He, she didn't understand you. He said, "I asked him had he read the Bible when he was young," and he said, "No." He said, I asked him why. He said, because he liked to play. <laughs> he said, he liked to play. And then I asked him, what if you were standing before God? He, and you know, you died and you standing before God. And he asked you, and he said, why? I left my word. And he started laughing. Yeah. I <laughs> so I think it, it wasn't too, too long after that that I read the New Testament, hardly under, understand, understanding parts through filter but like and i think i got through like chapter 12 of revelation i'm like i this one i i'm i'm not gonna finish this one because i know i'm way way off but it, it was yeah so anyway this we got we got to we got to be throw did i make it. you cry that time i told you you hate god and you didn't let me see it yeah, you made me cry that time. How old were you? Um, I think I was about seven or eight. I think I was about eight. Ooh, it seemed like I was mean because because if you were seven or eight, that means I was around seventeen or eighteen. Yeah, I was about eight years old. 
I think it was about eight. No wonder you don't hate me. <laughs> I never hated you. I, I didn't understand you, but I knew there was stuff that you were going through. I, I never hated you. I wanted to beat you up sometimes. But... <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, Andrina. Andrina, don't speak verbally. Have you ever wanted to punch me or beat me up? Okay. Me? No, I told I asked her if she ever wanted to punch me or beat me. And she she thought for a while, yeah. then she started smiling and said, "No." I used to, I used to think if I was older and I was bigger, no, uh -huh. I, I, me and you would go with it. Well, I think when you got seventeen and I was going to handle you, and you made your body stick out like a stiff board, and it's like the only way yeah. I can win wrestling you is I got to hurt you. I left you alone after then because it, uh, it was fun doing stuff, to, you know, playing with my little brother. But it's like yeah. manhood done crept in. There. And you almost body slammed me in front of mama. That's what it is. Yeah. Because he didn't get a fucking thing. I'm trying to this time. I'm muscular. I knew he, I could. I'm like, the, the bed was right there. I'm like, I'm going to body slam it's, like, it's like he he all that watching before. wrestling he, it helped him. <laughs> He was about to slam and him. You, 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 caught, you caught my head and tw tw twisted it a little bit. And, I know it. And I was like, if I had been thinking, if I, had, but it didn't hurt. I, but I was like, okay, he got me. But I was like. I learned in wrestling, you got the head, the body follow. <laughs> but here is the thing. The reason all this is coming up is that when I told you that you hated God, it wasn't to be mean. It was to make you think. Because it's like, okay. It's a, I knew that then too. I okay. Knew that. Okay. Like if you I saw your heart. I saw your heart from a child. Okay. I, I mean, that's why I hated. I, I mean, I wanted to beat the people up in Sunday school too. That's how they did you. I wanted to beat them up. I like the <laughs> you did. Yay! <laughs> oh. Okay. I'm. It's filled. You know, you filled it. Full filled. You filled it. Thank filled, you. You know.
from the, the, the myths that are being taught in the pulpits every Sunday. Yes. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. See, there's they say it's a sound doctrine, and there's something that is unsound. Myth. Yes. Okay, he's gonna say it. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers. There will not be a lack of teachers teaching the wrong thing that you can heap them up. Yeah. That means you can pile them up in so many of them. Stacks on deck. Stacks. <laughs> okay. Having itching ears, you want to hear what you want to hear. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. And she'll be turned unto fables. What is that word? The word fables, click Tim. The word here is the muthos, muthos myth, speech, conversation, a narrative of a story a without narrative. distinction of fact or fiction, then of a fictitious, I mean, a fictional narrative as opposed to logos, truth, the truth of history. We've been under that since we got here. Yes. We've been under the spell of that muthos, that myth since we got here and we refuse to let it go. Refuse it. And we keep perpetuating it and telling people that yes, let's just preach Jesus. You've been under that myth this long. You have not endured sound doctrine. So when you hear the truth, it's disgusting to you. I can't put up with that. Oh, well, ain't nobody where you are or where you doctor, doctor. Or, and as if he hasn't given you all things that pertain to God life, and God life and godliness. To what? The, the knowledge. Uh, that's it. Second Peter. Because he talked about y'all being turned to fables then too. Second Peter 1. There's 2 P one ten That should do it for you. Simon Peter, grace and peace be verse 3. You want to read it? Want me to read it? You can read it. Well, According as his down. divine power have given unto us all things that pertain, pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. You tell me when to stop. I'll stop right there. I'll go all the way down because I want to get to the, that, that myth. Okay. Where he says in 16, for well, we have not followed cunningly devised fables. Is that the same word? It's the same word. We haven't followed cunningly devised myths. When we made known unto you the power. What is the power? That's when you go back up and see the power. He has given you all things. That's the power that he gave you. He had the power to give it. This is the gift he gave you. He gave you power to put away those things to add to your faith. Nobody's teaching you that. Faith, faith, faith. Nobody's teaching you virtue. But that's the power you're supposed to have. Yes. That's the power you've been lied to that you don't have to add anything to your faith. That's, that's the power. That's work, Sandrina. That's work. Can I tell y'all part of the problem? <laughs> we are, how, Gary? I, okay, I cut in. I don't want to cut in. That's okay. We, we, we haven't conversation. EF yeah, Hutton even, yeah, even need to listen, so I need to let me be quiet make sure she... <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I like that uh, though, Andrina. It's power because it made me think okay, when you said that the word of God you, is quick. Keep going. I just powerful. He said, according as his divine power hath given us. He said, We didn't follow no cunningly devised fable. We told you about the power. This is the power he told us about, told them about, he's telling us about giving you all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge. He has called us to glory and to virtue. Ooh, make you famous. Make you weighty. Make you honorable. Promises. You've been, you may, he makes you a partaker of the divine nature, not just through faith. Yes. You supposed to escape. The corruption. That is in the world. Through lust. You give all diligence. You add to your faith. Virtue. Virtue knowledge. People don't want virtue. They don't want knowledge. No. We don't. I hear, and I can hear you talking to 
pastors in this in this I feel ashamed because they're black. Yes. I feel ashamed first. Say, say, just say what you really think. Because I'm black and they're black. I feel ashamed. I feel ashamed as a woman listening to men talk like children emotionally. When I say emotional, that means to speak emotionally without having a certain amount of manhood to just listen and to receive instruction like you would do on a job where you're getting paid at least you'll let somebody teach you something so you can learn a trade you'll be quiet and you'll listen and you'll pick up on it and you have no shame about that because you know in the end it's gonna make you money how dare you not listen and learn and, and take it and go with it it's not either one of us to have that it belongs to either one of us. It's all been given to us. He has given that divine power to all of us. But yet you speak as if, well, I'm not where you are. And I feel ashamed. I, I feel scared as a woman when I hear men speak like that. Because I feel no protection. I feel that they, I, I don't feel they can take me anywhere that I would want to follow them. It's scary. I want you to explain that deeper and why you say that because sometimes I'm just saying sometimes I'm on I'm on I have people that listen to me on YouTube and sometimes it's preachers and sometimes men don't hear women talk like that. Most of the time they hear women want to make us subservient. They want to hear men that really you got another word for it. I won't say, but they want to effeminize or emasculate us. And I, I really would like to why your thoughts are there. Help them to see what I live with whenever I, I hear. I don't know what else to say. You, I just. You I say I won't. I, I don't know how else to explain it. Just I don't, just go I, further. Just in other words, when you talk about no protection, I don't think some men know what that means. When, when you I say hear, when I hear as a black when woman, I hear black men preach. I don't hear any power. I don't hear anything that would make me believe that they're going to lead other black men to being strong in the earth. And when I say strong in the earth, I mean by his power to do his will, to live according to his will, to be able to lead us. That I don't hear enough word coming out of them because that's what the power is. I hear them coming out. I hear white folks coming out of them. I hear certain parts of seminaries coming out of people and you you want to have well I know this and I read that and I got that but I don't hear any power I don't have any power to change lives I don't hear it I hear it you're going to gather together you're going to have a good time and we're going to sing some songs and we're going to you know go and look at a couple of scriptures and we're going to go home historically it hasn't been that way at least during the 60s during the 20s you had black men that they had churches and they would do things they would build they would occupy they would teach i just i just hear like let's just come to church and what does that do in the real world it's two separate worlds And so it it makes me afraid because what's gonna happen when that day come and when it whenever it should come and that day has already come in many instances and we can see that historically that men are afraid to stand up for the truth of God's word. Men are afraid to do what they need to do. I can't say that. Because of our fear. And it's like, let's just go along to get along and let's not cause any rifts and let's not go beyond what is allowed in whatever congregation or whatever um, assembly. assembly or establishment you may be a part of. You know what they call the, the, the Church of God in Christ or the Church of God in Holiness or 
whatever other churches or establishments they have, the Presbyterian church, let's not go beyond it. Oh, Satan. Say what, Gary? You said the church is synagogue of Satan. Synagogue of Satan. Let's not go beyond what has already been the formula. Mm -hmm. Let's not add to faith anything. Peter's just a liar. <laughs> And he didn't know anything. Uh, oh, impetuous. You know, he was impetuous. Yeah. It's like I would follow him before I follow anyone to say that every day of the week. And he told you you're supposed to add to your faith. And I don't hear it. I don't hear it. And it scares me because it reminds me of when I'm watching these movies. And I understand that Black men were under a whole lot of pressure just to preserve life. But we became white men's bed witches. Say it again. We became white men's bed witches because many were afraid. And I can I can understand that. I can understand that. But I did see some of them die because they refused to see it done. But that's that's it. And it's like they're removing your masculinity through this thing, this myth called Jesus. This mythological Jesus. And you don't sound like him. I don't hear, I don't hear you talking like him. <laughs> I hear a bit more white men talk like him than the black men. With that sort of power and that authority, you know, you have no authority, and this is the authority you're supposed to have. This is your authority, and their their authority may that come from money and privilege, not the Most High. And you cheese and you grin, and it's all a joke, and everything is fun, and it's a hee hee ha ha, and you don't see that you are at war. You don't see that they came and attacked your church and shut it down. Tell it, say it, you please say no it again. Strength. You had no strength to say no. I ain't doing it. Do whatever you have to do. And you compromised and you bowed your, your head down. Because let's get back in there. Now you're scrambling trying to figure out how do I still collect money? How do let me go ahead and preach? And how do I get online to preach? And how do I have to set up this where I can still take money? And you still ain't telling people the right thing. Glory. There's no, there was absolutely zero strength during that time. I see no strength from these pastors. And I'm specifically talking about black. No strength, no power. You weren't willing to suffer when you, let, you led your congregations to pharmacia. Yes. Yes. And now it's coming back and they're saying, well, you know, these diseases and things like that happen to people just dying and stuff like that. How, how are they justifying it now? And then say, let's go back and do it again. They're telling you the truth now? But yes, we experimented on you. And your church is still behind it. And they courted you. And they did they did it in the worst way. And you didn't even warn your people. You didn't even warn your people about the uh, uh, jab in a joint. You yeah. didn't even warn your people about they. Who do you think they're trying to appeal to? A joint and a jab. The same one that that man say, we need to grow some weed out here at Newburgh. You know, I want me some people smell like weed. Because, you know, we, I'm going to teach them how to farm. And it's like, I, I got they you. advertising to? They give you a donut. Well, you think they were advertising? You, that they were advertising the Buckhead, Martha's Vineyard. Who you think they use some, some silly rapper talking about vax that thing up? Who do you think they were courting? And you didn't even warn your people. And what was that man? Wasn't it a man that you heard on YouTube, man, because they were getting him $250,000 uh, to, to get people to hurry, 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 and then they taking it from them, they got angry? 
the the particular person that he's talking about is they were paying. Let me go backwards. They were paying all the black radio stations, all the black radio stations. If you had a, a, a podcast, if you had over so many subscribers, they would pay you to advertise this medical procedure. To the black people. To the black people in particular. So they paid black radio stations. They paid black, black podcasters, people who were on YouTube, have YouTube channels. They were paying them to advertise, to go out and say, hey, they are every hour on an hour. Tell them that they got to get this medical procedure. Once the thing they and they were getting this money, and oh, they was, I mean, someone would pay over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the duration of the time that they needed people to get out and get it. So what happens when it's okay? Well, you know, they said we need to flatten the curve, and and we need so many to done, and once we get so many done, poof. The money is gone. That's the only way we know that the money was there because they didn't tell us. We just knew every hour on the hour, you know, black stations, they were saying it. They were browbeating you. They were stuffing it down your throat. Yes. They weren't doing that that much on, on sports radio. Oh, they were doing a little bit, but on white, like WGST, no, where, where you would have, Rush was still alive then. Sean Martin Levine, they yeah, wouldn't. As a matter of fact, you would hear some kickback from the conservative side. Yes, you would hear you would hear Dr. Oz kickback, different ones, you know. Because remember, at that time, before I knew what was going on, I said they're gonna do this. So I went and bought me some stock, and I said, and I done made five. I done made, and I said I done made this much money. Uh, 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 uh. I'm selling it. I'm saying it didn't take long. It ain't like I had fifty thousand dollars in it. Okay, I mean I didn't have I didn't have a whole lot, but I saw it. Okay, the five hundred dollars ain't a lot of money to make, but I knew when I looked at it. I said, "This is." I started looking. Remember when you went and did it for me? I said, "Go read on that thing, the CDC, or you did it on your own, whichever way it was." And you start showing me the list, all of these things. I said, I can't do this. I got rid of every bit of it. I don't want to be a party of it. And, the, and, you, and you know, the, and say the most ridiculous thing, like, well, you know, we're going to take it a half faith. No, don't take it a half faith. That's how that works. But you was so consumed with the world, and I bet you didn't even know it. But he showed your true colors. It did, and then preachers get paid because I know one person, one past like, don't tell me this ain't real. I know somebody that died, but you, but did you know anybody that would tell you that people weren't getting treated? Did they tell they you that tell Cuomo you that. sent all those people to the hospital? I mean, to the nursing home? Did they? All they took was all they could have done thirty minutes of just research, just to look out for your people, just to look out for the sheep just to care for them, just to be a real, true watchman. In 30 minutes, I'm yep. just trying to seek and make sure that you were saying the right thing. Did you know that Jehovah's Witness didn't have that problem? They didn't have that problem. <laughs> That's sad, isn't it? And now they're telling you, yeah, we got you. A lot of places, some of the places in Africa, didn't have that problem. They did. They they burned down their little testing sites and everywhere they thought they didn't. Were that, didn't didn't that it. king or that that um leader get killed or, yeah, or they they just died? Just died. Just died. They die. murdered him. They murdered him. You don't the one to swab the goat. Yes. In the papaya. Yes. But we. But this is and this this is it. It's like, are you really just an agent of the state? Yes. You're not God's man. You're a hireling. And whenever someone approaches you with the truth and say, let's go deeper into God's word, I mean, you throw your hands up, you get an attitude, you sound like a lot of women. You, haven't you heard and me scream at me? Have you heard me scream at me in a high yes, voice? It was like, <laughs> golly. Scream. 
Mm-hmm. And you lose all sense of reasoning. And most of all, you have no fear of the most high. And you don't hear his voice because when you hear his voice, you can hear when good comes. You know when good, well, you know when you hear good. But you won't see it. You won't see it. Because you think you already know. And you think what you know is enough. And you think, oh, that this is satisfactory. And you've determined that. That's how you determine your own righteousness. You're walking in your own righteousness. But just for a moment, just imagine that maybe he say, hey, I want to take you higher. Mm. I want to make help you reach more people. Did just you- imagine that he said, but he's got to send somebody to say it. Do you remember whenever the, it was up and like all the thousands and the like sometimes like how does many people listen at one time when it got when it was really good when it was really that people were dying and their places were shut down and all of a sudden it's like on a Thursday all these hundreds of people yes. but most of the people don't want to hear what I say no because you talk, you talk about the most high in his word too much. I mean, and most people have been taught it doesn't take all that. You save and don't let nobody remove you from that. And nobody's removing you from that. Somebody is trying to take you higher. And it's like Gary said, Apollos didn't complain. True, he didn't. Yes, I want to go higher. Paul didn't complain. Yes, I want to go higher. It's it's um we've been under that myth a long time. I was... We don't want to move away from it. And it's the men. Me and you, these men don't want to because. Sure enough, if y'all move, we're going to move because you're going to move with power. We're going to see that as we see that as power. You know what's scary to me? Most of the time when I see black men move in the nation of Islam and they're not following the most high, and that's, that's sad. But we that call ourselves been with God, and then the ones that do tell the truth. They say, oh, no, we don't want to be bothered with them because they call themselves under the law, but it's like you lawless. And it's, and it's good. I'm, I'm grateful to you as a woman that you're saying stuff that I don't hear of many women say because most of the time they want to take the power. They say there's this vacuum here in the mail, you know, in the mail that's supposed to be following y'all. So we'll take your place. But even Deborah wouldn't do that oh. for Barrick. No, but a woman is gonna get your glory. But it ain't me. You don't. You don't put me to take your when place. You, when you have to see and hear us, something is wrong. I mean, it, it, I mean, I'm talking about on a grander scale than what the Most High prescribed. Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, yes, he he prescribed us. He said you you can't do it without her. I look at you. You can't do it without her. But the roles are never supposed to be reversed. And when you see the roles reversed, something is wrong. Did you see me? Did you catch me addressing that when I was quoting the the virtuous woman and how we mean sometimes we don't value, we don't value you all. We don't. God made you all more than for doggone sex. You all are supposed. You all are supposed to be the crown for our head. The crown. Not only the crown of our, the, our glory, and not only the crown of our glory, but the build community. And we sit back and like, we want to be, sometimes we want to be the crown or the woman mm. in the church. Whew. I'm glad you brought this up. 
and you have these people that call themselves first ladies and you know they about church business i understand you gotta do church stuff but i don't hear no word coming out of them mm -mm. no word and many times it's because i don't hear no word coming out of their husbands good lord and jesus no power no power Gary, help me. <laughs> um, I think you've done a very fine job. Tim asked that you gave a righteous perspective. I don't want to call it perspective. You gave the righteous voice of a godly woman. I will never be one. It was good. I mean, it's, it's a shame that they had to go to the boulder. Don't want to change. Mm -mm. You know, you talk about, you talk about holidays, and uh, and this may seem like it's not even related, but I I, I think it is because I think it deals with the lazy laziness and not the sacrifice. Holidays give a form of what love is, and you know, Christ said, "By this shall you know that you're my disciples if you have one for another." But it's packaged in how you love, and you can do it for a few days, and that's in, that's in a lot of these holidays. Mm -hmm. You know, so you mentioned if you mention a holiday, then it's not that it's well we understand, but it's like we this how we kind of show love, even if that's not what it is. But it's like, you know, love love is really deeper than that, and it is a decision, and he tells us how to decide. <laughs> so, you know, if you, if it, and, uh, no, it was that that was good. That was really good. Um, yeah. You don't nobody want to hear it. I'm, I mean, I mean, I do believe there are there are a few scripture shows you'll see, you'll see some, and there's the remnant. But uh, I believe that remnant is there for a reason. I mean, we we is it broad is the way that lead unto destruction. What is that seven and thirteen, Matthew? Yep. Many, 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 many going to find it. It's that 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 broad is the way. Is mega is the way, mega, mega Broadway, mega church. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> do you, Andrina, do you remember before they shut us down with net zero, the thousands and thousands of not just listens but downloads we were getting in China? Yeah. Thousands and thousands because the because they understood that here in the scriptures they even have a woman that would sing the scriptures just to sneak it in. She'll sing it, oh, she got a music playing, and she sing the scriptures. But you know, they just think it's music, but she's actually singing the scriptures. But these are people who hunger and thirst for the word that let me hear what righteousness is because we can feel what we got right now is not it we know oppression you remember that time when we when we on our when we're podcasting before they did stuff to our to our site and the lady from africa said don't ever stop yes she was from uganda don't ever stop. we need this because we don't have people to teach that'll actually go through scriptures. And it's like, yeah, hey, we got that in America too. And we're not so far away from that. So it's, and people say it's not necessary. And you answer, <laughs> but it's not you like, did Jesus preach Jesus? And I said, yeah, I can find one place <laughs> he did. And I said, on the road to Emmaus. Yeah. And <laughs> then, and I say, and, and you don't hear people even attempt it. They hate the Old Testament. What, what was what was he talking about? Him, all those scriptures start oh, from you, Moses. The Old Testament. And, then, and when you read in Acts, and they start, and that guy that you were talking about too, the Ethiopian eunuch with Philip, he started in Isaiah. Yeah. Because I went, and I went and read, and I said, "Do I want to teach that today?" Where he started and show where it go to fifty four, because that's fifty three. I said, "No," because really, I really want to move in. I want to finish my series because I want to teach the book of Mike. I never talked. Mike could talk about justice real hard, but 
in in looking at that and seeing the different places where they preach Jesus, if a person never goes back and look at what they were preaching, you're going to think it's still the mythological. Mm -mm. You have to look at the epistles to see what they taught about the real Jesus. There is no way that you can come to someone who knows nothing about the Hebrew God and say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The, The only place you can do that is people who are already familiar with the scriptures. They were looking for him. Is this the one? Is he the one? Right. You can only go to your own people and say he's the fulfillment of what we've already been taught. Yes. When you see in the book of Romans, Paul start preaching to the Romans. He start from the beginning. I can't start you off with Jesus. <laughs> I got to start you off with God. And he did this. Yes. I got to give you the gospel of God. And I got to turn tell you how you got to where you are. On your own. Yes. You didn't, you you know, y'all don't, yeah, y'all see these things in nature. Nature testifies to his glory. Y'all see it. To his power. To the Godhead. Yes. You are without excuse. Yes. I have to start there. I can't start you off with Jesus, Jesus. If you don't know him. You don't don't know know him. You have no history with him. You are aliens. You are aliens. From the commonwealth of Israel. So I got to start you from the beginning and bring you into that and tell you there's a way you can get out of this rebellion you in. Because you what you do about God, you didn't honor him. And you didn't like to retain him in your knowledge either. You knew him. Forget about it. And so the Satan gave you eventually another, when you first first started learning about the real one, he gave you another one. When y'all first gave you his word and he was Lord, y'all got y'all one to call it by all. When when mm-hmm. when the Most High told his name was El Elyon, you all got you all El Elyon. You call yourself when you all had a spirit, you all had a spirit. Whenever he would give his messengers the Satan's in his what they call Shadim, always if I can move you from the truth, yes. To the mythological, to the fake, to the one that don't have the ultimacy of power, I can destroy you. I I had uh, some. I, go, ahead. go ahead. I got some I want to show you, Gary. Um, Andrina can see it later on because she's not looking. Okay. But okay, I want you all to see. Yeah, I want you to see. Oh, uh, where he can he can just. Um, I'm on the conference. Well, you're going to miss this one. This is going to be so good. I want to show you St. Christopher. I found a St. Christopher. looked like he came straight from Egypt, okay? So let me share this screen. Because I didn't know this one existed. And open. There is St. Christopher with a man's body with a dog head. Mm. Is that not not (laughs) Egyptian-esque? See him? Yeah. Wow. I told you a lot of this stuff, Saint with the dog head. I was like, wow. Let me, there he is again. Having the head of a canid, the dog of a, or a jackal. And he did it in Egypt. It's a Greece, Saint Christopher. Wow. And they were telling me that. It, it, this is see you use the name Christopher. They don't tell me it ain't supposed to have something to do with Christ. Maybe it don't, but here it is. This is a protector. And you wear it. I just thought that I, I saw it and I said, Tim, share it. Mm-hmm. Share it. Because the mythological Jesus is no different than that. Because they say when they say all gods are the same, you're saying he's the same as Het, Bacchus, Osiris, mm-hmm. Krishna. If, if all of them are the same, mm-hmm. it will. Christ mask. Yeah. Oh, yes. The, the Christ mask is your Christmas. Yes. You all, all go to mass. Yes, it is mass. You celebrate mass. You go to mass on Christmas. It, used to, be, it, it used to be spelled like C-H-R-I-S-T-E-U-S space M-A-S-S-E for mass. Then it became you the Christ the mass. mass. And, it's part of the Catholic church. And then you use that, then you use the key, like it looks like an X mass. Mm-hmm. 
So like you don't want no spell. Yes, but you're still doing abominations. And you don't and you won't speak out against it. It's like you lose something. They ain't well, speaking now because they collect money. Yes. If that what um the man that started Calvary Chapel, Chuck Smith, when I talked to him, I asked him about it. And he says, Well, you know, he talked like this. Well, we know it's not right, and we know it has nothing to do with God, but that's the day when people come to church and we're able to use that to get people to come to church. And I asked him about eat the same thing about Easter because he used to come on my listen to WRAF when I was working, doing some work in games for years ago and they had satellite. And I called in and I, cause I thought he was going to avoid it. I thought he was going to avoid it and he didn't. So when you say all these Calvary chapters, yeah, it, we just do it anyway. Secretism. Yes. idolatry let's do it anyway you gonna have people to come to church for what they're not coming back until the next year maybe possibly what is that what how does that affect their lives it doesn't don't you think they ought to you make, just tell them they free for the next year don't you think they ought to make a gospel song say do it anyway you want to do it yeah do it anyway you want to. <laughs> because that's what we do and we present to Yah. What we determine as an offering, that was the problem in Malachi. I ain't talking about the tithe. He's like, we don't care nothing about the Lord. We'll give him two up animals, blind, ones we don't want. So, Lord, we'll give you the time we don't really care that much about. We'll do it. I just see all this hee-hee and ha-ha and hey and, and clapping hands and singing. And don't you see what's going on around you? And it looked like you think you're an entertainer. And you get and you get and you get Snoop to be the number one gospel song uh, entertainer. I see way too much cheesing and grinning and grinning and clapping the hands and God. 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 You ought to be mourning. There's no weight to anything. No weight to your messages. No severity. Do you know I could teach a very short message if it had no severity? If I didn't have to prove, you see me, I could take one scripture and give you a three minute message. We had to do that in school. I give you a two minute message. I give you a, I give you a title, a head, body, conclusion, and come to Jesus. But what is that gonna, what is that gonna do for your knowledge? Your preacher's not teaching you. I don't wanna die like that. I don't wanna die like that. Paul said he didn't shun to give you the whole counsel of God, Acts chapter 20. Preachers don't mind. Just go ahead and hashtag, cash pay, push pay, jump. jump. And, uh, well, let's just exhort you, exhort, exhort, exhort you. And just say I'm long suffering, long suffering, long suffering. In the love of so Jesus. To your rebuke. We don't do that. We rebuke those that try to rebuke. What about your reprove? We'll reprove those that seem to be intolerant. No, we'll reprove those who tell you you need to grow up. No, I don't need to grow up. You just grew too fast. You just could say everybody got to be like you. After 30 or 40 years in a in a church you said, 60 years old saying that. How many doctors do you think you'd have if you've been in if you've been in school 50 years, 40 years? Because once you get your under, get I'm your under thing. Sorry when I hear it. I just, you just sorry. You just setting your ways, and this is enough, and you've determined that this is enough, and you've already determined. I better not say anything else. Or people gonna leave the church. How how you know it might be more people come? Get a backbone, black man. Then you gonna raise up somebody that look just like you weak, saying the same weak stuff, and your your communities are in hell. They are hell. And anytime they're gonna build something good, they have to tear it down and move, and they move other people in here. We supposed to, we were used to be the moral oh, conscious. Okay. And they beat us have, down. Y'all have zero moral high ground because you say it doesn't matter. 
you can't even say, well, let us build ourselves up on God's word and let us act according to that divine nature he has given us. Yes. And let's add to our faith virtue. No. But we'll sing we the death. We to acknowledge. No. But we'll sing. We're going to stick on that mythological faith, 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 faith. That's all. And Peter is a liar. All the New Testament people that said anything other than faith, they are liars. If you add anything, if you add anything to the faith in Jesus, then you ain't saved. That's well, true. Peter must be lying then. That's, a, that's good. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and log that in to my computer as a because it, it, I make notes in my thing. Yeah. Evil. Seducers. You be seducing people. Seducing people away. You seduce people away from virtue. That's the first one you're supposed to add to your faith. And you're right. And the reason, I, the reason I'm saying that is because they say if those things ain't in you, they make you be unfruitful. And you know what happened to the unfruitful branches. I'm going to stop fussing. No. I'm fussing. I, I, I need to stop. Some, but see, sometimes, sometimes it comes to the place where enough is enough when you see people destroyed. And you know that they, they, they are already cooking up something new. Yes, always. And they advertise it. Don't do this again. Y'all better have some, some real strength. Just go on and acknowledge that they have always been doing experiments on us. Just if you even just think about that, that, that we the first ones they're going to come and do it to. The way that they said, well, I see all those people in Africa. I see a lot of dead bodies. Why? Because they're black. You don't think they're going to do it to you here? What do you think medical apartheid is? The book. You just talking about people with what, what, Tuskegee and, and you make excuses for that. And you think Tuskegee was it? You think that's it? Don't do this again. I'm ashamed. I'm so ashamed of my black people. I'm so ashamed. I'm so ashamed. And now they're telling you, we did it. We did it to you. And it's in your body. And we know some things go help. We waiting to see and we're going to track you. We did that to you. We did. We actually going to tell you, we actually lied to you. Yes. You going to be around your grandmamas and your yes, children. You're and You're not going to get it. We actually lied to you and didn't even let you know that, you know, natural immunity you know you get it you're good what you what you need that's the best no they didn't tell you that they just weren't treating people yes and when they did treat them they was treating them wrong on purpose mm -mm. No, I mean, you can't add that. You don't add nothing to faith. And these black men saying that. And you ain't teaching your children and your grandchildren. You just, just have faith in Jesus. What is that? You better add something. When you talk about medical, you brought that up, medical apartheid. Mm -hmm. I opened up the book, chapter two, Montgomery, Alabama. Has not forgotten the heroic role of three slaves, Anarika, Lucy, and Betsy, who suffered not only that themselves might be cured, but that women injured in childbirth and future generations might be saved from lives of misery and individualism. Now, this is what a woman wrote, a women's surgeon. But when you read and you find out what happened, 
when you find out how they did those women, how they cut those women, and they uh, they did all kind of experiments on these black women, so that James Marion Sims get to be what is called the father of gynecology. Then they start talking about the display of black bodies. I think I might just start reading this kind of stuff on uh on another thing. Just read what they've done to our people. How they just took this man and just put him in fire, not fire, but in a pit to cut his skin to see why he was made black. And God knows, and they talk about the restless dead when they would dig up our people to take body parts and do stuff like that to you. You think your loved one are buried? Nah, we pay grave robbers to do that. That may be why you end up um, doing what you did to make the movie called The Frankenstein's Monster. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's it's so much, so much. But um, listen to this thing in the eugenic control of the African American reproduction. We don't allow dogs to breed. We spay them. We neuter them. We try to keep them from having unwanted puppies. Yet these women are literally having litters of children. Barbara Harris, founders of the children, are uh, requiring caring for community the crack, the crack that they brought, the crack that they put in, the crack that they experimented in. We have, sometimes we have no clue. And this is a, this book is long and it goes through and shows some of the stuff that they did to our people with plutonium. Tim, I, you know so much. Well, I don't have to read everything because some books I listen to when I'm working. And it's like, Lord have mercy. We are just like a home-born slave. And what Jeremiah say? It, no, that's not Jeremiah. That's Habakkuk, right? Mm. Uh, is Israel just a homeborn slave? That's Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. back will say something about how long do this I wickedness get to go on? Yeah. Okay. You're I right. You're right. You're right. No wrong. But that's why I married you because you was in the Bible. <laughs> I, I ain't lying. Because I knew that. Imagine. You didn't love the Bible, how much you'd have to hate me. So many hundreds. Saints, we got to, we, I, I get to talk to a lot of preachers and most of the time when I do, it's quite disappointing. It almost as if it's, it's a club, just a club of preachers. Okay. And he doesn't get to have his way with us insofar as being our foundation of our knowledge base, our foundation of our ethical base, our foundation of what we see as reality and how we're to walk in the earth. And because of that, someone else fills the gap. And our sisters and our children, as well as we, we fail. We fail. And if we only knew how many things in this world has already been set up against us so that we don't prosper, that we don't have community. You know, because as I was talking to you last night, I went and, and I saw all of the different masks, not all of them, but so many massacres that had happened to our people that it was heart wrenching. The bodies, wow. the burnings, the stabbings, the shootings, the hangings, the buried alive, the drownings, just, the things that has happened and we still haven't turned to Yah. What is it what is it gonna take? If we jump on that quick get rich through Jesus thing and it did not promote righteousness. Oh it's a pseudo righteousness long you got money. That's where we are. I hate I hate the mythological Jesus. You know, I appreciate you all joining in with me. And I thank you, I thank you for speaking out, Andrina, when it talks about when we're talking about men, because you talk about how we're failing our community so badly. Our sons, our daughters, the wives, Messiah. It's a shame. The one thing that most people don't want to be is a black man. And they might like your culture, your dancing and stuff. Father, help us. Chasing us where needed. 
We have to replace us with our children to get things right, do what's necessary to make this earth like it is in heaven. I pray you, Father. Amen and amen. amen. I thank everybody for joining us today. And it makes me happy that we're ending on a somber note because we have a somber, we have a somber country. We do. And a somber people. Yeah. And it's time for us to mourn. I thank everybody for joining us. May Yahweh bless us, keep us, make his glorious face shine upon us and be gracious to us, correct us where it's needed, beat us where it's needed so that it can yield a peaceable fruit to our heritage. Amen, amen, and amen.